students have read it. What's your well that happened moment in the classroom? This happened like 2 to 3 semesters ago at my college. I was in finance class, about 10 minutes from it ending. It was around 2.30, and I had to work at 4.30. Planned on hitting the gym between. Typical day, was getting ready to go, by drinking my pre-workout in the last 10 minutes of class well. Turns out someone had a different plan. We get an email, that the school is in a legitimate lockdown. There's a questionable man on campus with a tactical vest and large backpack walking around campus. Oh boy point so here's the reactions to this information 50% of the class immediately panics. No idea what to do. Huddles in the corner texting their loved ones. One chick bawling her eyes out, making all of the noise, puked in the corner. Sick point foreign exchange student whips out his laptop and starts a League of Legends game, getting visibly agitated at it in the back of the room. Faking Yasuo, Amirite, teacher breaks a piece of metal off the vent and stands by the door, prepared to what looks like, kill Julius Caesar professor in the adjacent room, connecting door, walks in, and explains that we should all calm down. Because worst case scenario is we die, and we get a cool plaque with our name on it in the hallway this does not help the students already having anxiety. May I note? I'm over here, phone dying, absolutely yeeted to sheet on pre-workout with the inability to expend this energy, wondering if I'll get fired for a no call no show, and feeling 99% pissed, rather than scared point look to the left out the window. Swat him on the roof point jpg point had this sketchy man came into our room, I'm of the utmost confidence that he would have walked away without harming a single human. Simply because it was apparent that God left this classroom long ago and we were in more hysteria alive than dead. Anyways, 2.5 hours later, I'm able to call my boss after we were allowed to leave and tell him that the kid who got reported is simply a student going to class and had a big backpack. There was no vest. The student who reported him had already gotten in trouble for trying to start a racial conflict a week prior, and just had an agenda to push point the amount of pissed I was was immeasurable. Back in 8th grade middle school we had this really cool and shall you point s history teacher. He never raised his voice, and he was pretty laid back about class and work. He taught in a storytelling kind of manner, and I don't ever remembering and notating any document in his class well, we had that one kid. In this story I'm gonna call him Jim Jim was always late to class, and never turned stuff in. He was that one really cringy kid that everyone either hated or pitied. My teacher never got really fed up with him, but would always show his distaste for him in his facial expressions my teacher normally would pull him aside, to talk to him about his tardiness or missing assignments. Jim would say he would be earlier slash do the assignments, but he of course never did point one day, Jim walks in late again. My teacher is about to start teaching, and when he turns and sees Jim walking in point well, this time, my teacher wasn't so happy about it. It was the middle of the school year towards the end, and my teacher must have gotten so fed up with Jim at that point point my teacher yells Jim's name at the top of his lungs he normally had a boomy voice, but when he yelled it amplified a hundred times over. The ground literally shook when he yelled, and I'm sure they could hear him from downstairs at the other end of the school. Our school wasn't that small either. For the rest of the class period, about 30 minutes, literally it was dead silent. Everyone was still kind of shocked from it. Not in the classroom, but it's still something that happened at school point at the last day of school. The entire high school goes into the theater for assembly. Then the entire grade presents the students that are leaving. And for every person that is leaving, a friend of this will walk up with a microphone and state why they will miss them, their achievements, etc. Point in our school year, this kid, let's call him John, was a complete as whole. He treated everyone badly and smoked in school, etc. A rumors have it that he was asked to leave at the end of the year and that he was pretty much expelled. But he was still presented by his friend in front of the whole high school point. When his friend finished talking, he grabbed the microphone, pointed to our principal, and shouted in a dim glad that I'm leaving this school, as I'll never ever have to see your faking face again. Then he gave the mic to his friend, and left via backstage point everyone was at this assembly, from grade 9 to grade 12. Every teacher, counselor, even the principal and the director of the school was there. There was a huge gasp and everyone was completely silent for the next 30 seconds. 
Then the next people which are leaving walked up to the stage point so, yeah. That happened. I was standing outside the classroom before class. Tim was a popular pothead who played a guitar. Gary was an apocalypseman who'd been in some troubles before point Tim had hurt himself somehow and so he was on crutches. We are standing there, Gary comes walking by with a group of dudes and just yanks one of the crutches away from Tim apostrophe oh, thanks. Tim says. Gary and the dudes walk off, and the bell rang, so I walked in, and Tim hobbled on one crutch. The teacher saw, but I guess she thought Gary was supposed to take the crutch for some reason point class was ending, and Tim complained, because he couldn't get to his next class, unless he got his crutch back. The teacher apologized for her misunderstanding the situation, and phoned the vice principal, so that he could try to locate Gary in this crutch. This was not a hard job for the vice principal, because Gary had gotten in trouble with him earlier in the day, so he'd stolen the crutch from Tim and promptly burst into the vice principal's office, and threatened him with it. Point story from the dude standing outside the office was, that Gary was swinging crutch around. He knocked over a trash can, and was pounding on the desk with the crutch. The vice principal stood across the desk from him with his arms in the air. He kept saying, think about what you're doing Gary, you don't want to be doing this now apostrophe I guess that by the time the teacher called, Gary had been de-escalated and disarmed, and it was all over, except for figuring out where the crutch had come from. It would've been great, if she could've warned him ahead of time. Not my story, but my English teacher in high school told it point a little backstory, I went to an ALC center at this time, which is basically a high school for kids with mental problems and bad home life, that makes regular high school impossible slash extremely difficult. Ours happened to be situated in an old strip mall right next to the pizza and pasta point anyways it was about 11am, and she was teaching her class when this man just walked in through the front door, and into her classroom, since it was closest to the front door. He looked around what was very obviously a classroom, a desk, a projector, bookcases, posters about grammar, and learning the whole shebang, and looked at the teacher, and started asking her, if she wanted to buy his steaks she asked him to please leave as this was a classroom point he insisted, that his steaks were high quality, and that they were a good price point she asked him again to leave, since she was trying to teach the man turns to the nearest student and starts asking him about buying his steaks. Student just stares at him not knowing how to respond. My teacher calls in the principal point principal shows up, man pushes past him, and runs out the door, and down the street point teacher just shrugged, and went back to teaching. She was a really good teacher, and made the kids enjoy, being in the class so no one really wanted to continue talking about it until after class, so that they could continue the lesson point a few years after that, and a few more incidents of people just walking in we got a new door with security measures on it point it's still a joke around the school as far as I know to randomly say I got some high quality meat in a weird accent. This is the story of Dot the Dog Point my high school English teacher in my junior year was known for being fun and eccentric. She told wild stories and had odd habits. The oddest habit was bringing a large plaster Dalmatian dog to class on test days. We all petted for good luck. It had been a tradition in her class for over 20 years I Ike point this thing was ugly. Terribly plastered. Fading paint. Weird proportions. The fact that it was the size of a real Dalmatian made it weirder. But it was important to her. So important that she chained it to desks to keep it from being stolen point because every year, someone would steal it point. When I was in her class, Dot was stolen and held for ransom. Videos with a blindfolded Dot were sent to my teacher, detailing how Dot would be released if the test was cancelled. This didn't work, Dot was not returned, and test day was looming point students became upset that Dot was not there to comfort them. The dog napper was found, and he returned dot point for a time point later in the year, our playful feud with the physics department was made known. The test day comes, and there are physics symbols all over this poor plastered dog. So, since I had art supplies at home, I offered to repaint dot. I was trustworthy, and had no schemes in mind, so my teacher agreed to let me point she unchained the dog point and hell broke loose point the previous dog thief quickly got up and snatched dot. Turns out it was light enough to bolt out of the class and to the parking lot with. His accomplice ran with him. 
I ran after it didn't help that I was wearing heels that day, but by some divine intervention, I didn't trip and was able to catch up halfway before they got to the parking lot. But before I could take back the plaster pup, the first guy passed it to his cohort, who then ran off. I tried to catch up to this next guy, but to no avail. I was blocked by the first point the second guy was in the clear. He would have gotten away with it point if he didn't drop and break it point dot was in pieces. We all had an oh sheet look on our faces. The teacher and rest of the class, hearing our distress, come out and see the carnage. The dust from the plaster blows away in the wind point dot the dog, a 20 odd year legacy, was gone forever our teacher wasn't too mad. She replaced dot with a golden plastic hippo. Wasn't the same though. She commended me for my effort point the school newspaper did a piece on the incident, but I was never mentioned. Still salty about that tbh point and that's the story of dot. Not many know it anymore, and there are so many comments here that I don't know if anyone will see this, but I can't live my life not telling this story point goodbye dot. Rip literally in pieces. This requires a little backstory point I lived in a tiny little town made up almost entirely of farmers. Most of the kids from my town didn't finish school, they just worked on their parents farms. Most of them got a jet or were homeschooled to comply with laws because our town was so small, population of less than 500 people, we had two choices for schooling point the private school about 20 minutes north or the public school about 40 minutes west. The private school was safe, with good teachers, and students that were under control. But it was expensive point the public school was the school that all the kids that were kicked out of their schools went. Most of these kids were violent, drug addicts, or just never showed up to class. Having nothing to compare it to at the time, I didn't realize how faked up it was until I moved away and made friends outside of school. We had an average of 3 to 5 bomb threats a year. We had several lockdowns because kids were bringing in knives or other weapons. Our school would bring in the local PD a few times a year to do dog searches for drugs. We had metal detectors in front of the school and you absolutely were not, under any circumstances, allowed to bring a book bag into the school point anyway. Suffice to say there were a lot of fights and a lot of violence. Two incidents stand out though amongst it all. We had a guy a grade below me that was absolutely obsessed with things being fair. He would lose his sheet if he thought someone was cheating. I was taking Spanish class with him and he caught the guy sitting one seat in front of him cheating during a test point he freaked out. He started screaming and calling him every name in the book. The teacher escorted him to the office and we all thought it was over. Except it wasn't point two classes later and he caught the cheater in the hallway. This kid was so pissed that he attacked him with the only weapon he had, a pencil. He shoved the pencil up the kid's nose and it came out his eye socket point he wound up getting arrested. Other kid lost an eye. Our town, and unfortunately the town we were bust to, were both extremely racist. We had a single kid in class that wasn't white, but after years of bullying, his parents took him out of the school point anyway. It had been years since we had anyone in the school who wasn't white. In sophomore year, it come out that one of the girls in my grade was dating a Mexican guy point the boys in our class, and in some of the classes both above and below us, lost their sheet point suddenly signs were appearing on her locker every morning. Horrible terrible derogatory things were plastered all over her locker. Then the bullying started. Some of the guys would trip her while she was walking. The girls took her clothes during gym class. She would get threatening letters in her locker eventually it ended when she involved the police. I always felt so bad for her. Oh my gosh I have a tale to tell. Sorry it's so long so I was junior drum major in marching band, but I wasn't enjoying the job, and in fact, it gave me great anxiety having mistakes pointed out by staff in front of 60 plus people. I would go to my band teacher for help on things like directions or what to do in certain situations and things will get better for about two days before they reverted to how they were before. I wasn't liking it. Fast forward to a few months ago. I was in a leadership meeting after the marching season had ended. Our band teacher had asked where our piccolo player was because he really wanted her to be a section leader and therefore show up at the leadership meetings. One friend explained that she said that she would rather quit band than be a section leader. 
This was shocking to all of us, because we were trying so hard to grow the band, not shrink it. We understood where the piccolo player was coming from though, because section leader is a difficult job, and she was a year one band player. But then, my band teacher explains that well, I'll get her next time. As if he does not care about her own choices. I say that, if she doesn't want to be a section leader, then let her be. I didn't say it in a rude tone, and in fact I'm surprised he even heard it. He looked at me dead in the eyes, and says you can leave now. I was shocked at first, because I didn't know if he was joking, so I asked what, really? And he goes yeah, you can leave now. I then promptly proceeded to cry for 5 hours my parents came home soon after that to find me crying. I explained to them how I was feeling about band, and they were so supportive and understanding. My dad gave me the advice to ask him if he truly wanted me as drum major next year, because it did not feel like it. I go in the next morning to apologize to him, and he explains that it's all in the past, and it's all okay. I then pop the question, asking me if he wanted me as drum major for next year. He then goes well, you'll have to wait until auditions. Really? I'm your junior drum major, and literally anyone else would have given some form of encouragement, like I know you're the junior drum major, but I really hope you do try out for auditions but no, there was no form of encouragement for me to come back. So, I take another month to decide what I wanted to choose. It boils down to three options. 1. I stay in band as a drum major. 2. I stay in the band, just as a regular clarinet player or 3. I leave the band. My issue was that I would need time next year because I wanted to take more advanced classes and band is like a part-time job. It would be so hard to do both, so after trying to leave all emotion out of my decision, I eventually decided that it was best for me to leave and to use the time to apply to college and focus on my classes. I go tell my teacher in person my decision. This conversation lasts about one minute and not once does he look in my direction. Seriously, he looked at his computer the entire time. I explained that, even though it was a difficult decision, that took me a very long time to make, I would need to quit band for next year. I tell him all the logistical reasons on why I'm quitting, about how I need the time for my classes, etc. I don't tell him that I'm also quitting, because of how the star funds the band, but that's a whole other topic. As I get up, to leave he just mumbles okay, fine, your choice. Yeah, it is my choice. The day after, my dad gets a call from him explaining the school oboe is back, so I can play it, because he said repairs would only take a month, but it took way longer, and we could no longer keep paying to rent one, and how I was such a great leader and oh we'll miss her, and how I'm my own worst critic. He had two chances to say that to my face, but no, he tells my dad via phone call. That day, during my last class, which was banned, a band staff teacher pulls me out of class, during school, and I already know what this is about. We walk outside, and he asks if I've been stressed. I explained that due to distant family issues, my Danish family member had cancer, and he's amazing, and doesn't deserve that, and classes, things have been stressful, but I was okay. He then asks why I was leaving and again, I list all of the logistical stuff, like I won't have time, I'm applying to colleges, I don't have the passion for it, etc. His response was claiming I was too lazy and just wanted to have an easy senior year, back off, I'm taking 4 app classes, and that I signed a 2 year commitment to be with the band. Okay, show me that. I never signed anything. Also, why would I have to do auditions if that was the case? But I'll give his final words, wow, I can't believe that after all I've invested in you, you're just quitting the band. Have a good senior year. And he storms off. Then I promptly proceeded to cry another 5 hours. I literally had to hide in the instrument room because school wasn't done and I didn't want to cause drama. After that, my parents were ready to throw hands, but I didn't want that for now because I didn't want to start any more drama. Fast forward 2 weeks to me getting home from a field trip. School ends at 2.10 and we get back 1.50, 10 minutes before we were scheduled to be back. The teachers told us not to bring anything, so my friends and I had nothing to do. We didn't want to waste time, so we asked our art teacher 
fully understanding she'd most likely say no because we didn't have permission from our last class teachers to stay in her art class to work. She said yes, but that night at 6.50 I get an email from my band teacher saying he wanted to talk to me. I reply sure, ask what time and what it's about. He doesn't answer except for the time. Thanks I go in the next morning, and oh boy I brought Macup, just expecting I'd be emotional after, because I thought it was about my decision. My band teacher starts by asking if there's anything going on at home. First off, no, my parents are not abusive. And secondly, if I wanted to tell you that, I would. That's very personal information. Then he goes on to explain that he is unsatisfied with how I've been behaving and my character is changing for the worst and that I'm contributing to making the band worse. He then gave me a detention for skipping class, reason being that I told my art teacher that I had my band teacher's permission to skip his class. I tried to say that wasn't what happened and explained what really happened and apologized if there was a misunderstanding. He wouldn't listen. I contacted my parents, and when I got home, they asked what had happened. Not only did I get a detention, my band teacher sent them an email about how I was lying, being uncharacteristic, and how I was out to get the band. I told him my decision in person, well in advance, because I cared about the band and wanted to make sure that if I left, they would be okay. My parents then intervened. Luckily they and the principal, who was so kind through all of this, pulled me out of the class, got me into another one, requested my band teacher write an apology letter, and made it so no band staff could talk to me without administration point that put me through a bad loop, but I'm doing much better now. Thanks if you stuck around and read the whole thing. The day of the nose point nothing, absolutely nothing even comes close to it, not just in my high school career in my almost 32 years of life point my old high school friends still talk about it, both to relive good times and to simply remember I was there. And even now, 15 years later, I have friends who work at my old high school telling me about students they're still telling each other about it. Embellished and exaggerated beyond all reason, of course. What's the fun about a good story if you can't add some of your own stuff to it? But I, I was there. And I will tell you what really happened. Point I'm in junior year physics at an all boys Catholic high school, taught by a well over 70 year old professor in his first year at a high school. Point now, for those of you who've never been to an all boys school, imagine all the dudes are your work hanging out together at break, all day, forever. You know all the stupid sheep those guys get up to making each other laugh. And all the shenanigans they do, or plan, together? Well, imagine they're teenagers with all that bored energy and social angst, and it's all spurring on the hilarity these chummy monkeys enjoy point, but without the women around. There's surprisingly not much to compete about anymore during the day, read, bullying and fighting, meaning that all the effort these men would otherwise spend jockeying for position is instead invested even more on all the antics done solely for their own entertainment. We are talking stuff like, kicking Tine out into the hallway for acting up in class, only for him to come back into class, unannounced when his friend Teen B gets kicked out later on. It's tag team, sir. Haven't you seen wrestling? Repeat for as long as it keeps getting laughs until end of period point taking a guy's backpack and throwing it into the seniors only quad, then watching how long it takes for either the guy to try and brave all the watching seniors, or for one of the teachers to go fetch it for the poor sod, all while the entire student body watches and cheers slash boos. Said seniors bringing 50 plus super soakers to school and shooting everyone outside the quad while standing in at point throwing mattresses into the swimming pool to cancel swim slash water polo practices. This happened at least once a year. We never figured out where they kept getting the mattresses from, taking running leaps off desks and slamming full speed into the classroom walls because A, your teacher is 400 plus pounds and can't stop you, and B, there's a class on the other side where some of your friends are and do you want them to tell you how much the wall moved when you did it. This happened multiple times daily every period, setting up trip wires in the photo lab so that the next person to walk in is doused in developing solution. Except the next person to walk in was the photo teacher who trips fully into the developing bath. Class was cancelled that day. 
Each of these would make four good stories on their own, but none of them holds a candle to the nose point it's 10am, that wonderful period just late enough in the day where those guys that sleep through first period are starting to wake up but of their own else can't wait until third period is over, so we can get to lunch. In other words, everyone is paying some degree of attention when class starts. The bell rings, but there's no Mr. Professor. That's fine, he's often late. He's old, remember? It sometimes takes him an extra bit to make it to the classroom while we are waiting. However, we can see a figure rummaging around in the hallway. Our class faced the doors, one flanking either side of the chalkboard. It seems like the figure is about to come in when the professor finally arrives. As the door closes, we can catch a glimpse of the figure in the hallway and what appears to be latex, but the door closed too fast and the figure was just enough out of sight. Where we were unsure point class starts not 5 minutes later, the figure appears at the classroom doors again and bursts through point it's a guy wearing a latex mask of a big nose. You know, one of those Halloween masks that fully covers your head so that it looks like their body ends up in simply a giant nose where the head should be. Look. Sir. The class clown yells from the front row. It's the nose, eh? The professor says. He's barely looked up from his projector, it was the early zeros, and is more looking at the class clown who spoke up than he is the masked newcomer. It's the nose, everyone's. Starting to say it now, as much to make a scene as they are anything else. Soon the whole room is chanting nose, at the top of their lungs. Desks are rocking, students are yelling, and some are actually dancing in the back for no reason at all. The guy with the nose mask turns, waves to the professor, then turns back to look at the class clown and pulls out water balloons from his pockets. Sir, he's got, a water balloon hits the class clown square in the face. It explodes, water everywhere, oh. Sheet sir. Says the class clown point as his own water balloons appear in his hands from nowhere point mind you. The class has just gone up a sheet. The moment the nose pulled out his balloons, a rising cry of woe lf hoped something would happen. And when the nose pegged the class clown, it's like a bomb went off. Everyone's yelling, those guys dancing in the back drop to the ground screaming oh my god, and everyone else is making as much of an individual ruckus as they can. But when the class clown returned fire with his own water balloons, it was like the madhouse unlocked all their cells in the prisoners rioted point tables are upending. People are running around screaming now, not just screaming in place. And those guys dancing in the back have stopped ducking for cover and started dancing on the far tables in the back point meanwhile. Back up front, the nose is visibly stunned. Apparently he wasn't expecting his co-conspirator's battle station to be fully operational and he's not sure what to do. But he does know that he doesn't want to be caught by the professor who hadn't heard the cries of the nose, but sure as hell saw two boys throwing water balloons at each other in the middle of class. With his great war cry of A, the professor gets up from his wizen chair and begins shuffling vigorously at the nose, who turns and runs right around the teacher's table. You see, at the front of our physics class there was a sturdy oak table teachers could use to sit at, hold papers on, or otherwise host experiments upon front and center. The professor rarely used it, preferring to sit in a seemingly shrine to grading papers in the far left corner, but here he was forced to get up and approach the nose standing behind the desk point he could only manage a good 5 feet every second or two, while the nose is clearly someone much younger. So they take a few Bugs Bunny turns around the table, the nose somehow throwing yet another balloon at the now chaos in front of him as he passes. Finally, the nose runs out the room, whether to reload or to escape I could not tell. And here is where the professor made his fatal mistake and turned this story into high school legend point he left the room and chased after the nose. The chaos stopped for the briefest of moments, a common thought crossing the class mind point had, that man just left the room, had the one authority ostensibly meant to keep a leash on the room's hilarity, left us to our own devices, a moment passes, then two, footsteps echo fainter and fainter up the hallway and no one is coming back point yes, yes he had, the madman had actually left us alone point the calm breaks, an utter sheet storm ensues, can't. 70 years old professor was defending a pro-life demonstration at campus in my high level Pali C class. The pro-life club set up a bunch of mini crosses in a field. 
Prof said faculty was having a feud over whether to allow the demonstration. He while being pro-choice and a Marxist hippie argued they should be allowed and that it could foster healthy debate point most of us were like fair enough. Now here's the thing, there was one black student in the class and a wrangly white philosophy student who sat beside him. I swear philosophy students, anyways, white dude puts his hand up, prof gives him the go ahead, and the white dude says what, if the crosses were on fire, fuck, man, why whole class turned into a 1.5 hours yelling match where the smug as white dude just continued cheat posting I, another one, to preface this I'm someone who studies and utilizes feminism quite often in my research and papers, however I met the perfect caricature of the so called feminazi. A fat purple mohawked haired 50 years old woman who was supposed to teach my English and citations, required LV100 in course, here are some choice quotes martini glasses of a ginus and beer bottles are phallic on purpose. Women in heels, are slutched I was the girl in high school who dated the black guy. Triumphant look, some triple A grade tokenism, the women in this course, hated her with a passion, but we all cheered, because she got cancer halfway through, and we got a new prof low level policy course we abu girl does presentation on American cultural imperialism which was fine enough, but at some point, said something along the lines of, women in bikinis, a hose every woman in that class, got into a massive screaming match over some being slutched shamed etc. It got pretty ugly point all the dudes and the prof were lost f. I look over at my 70 years bookworm prof and has lost f. Has no idea what's going on. ETC point finally after 10 minutes the prof steps in and says something like alright. Always good to have debate I'm moving on. Apparently a bomb was found in our school premise. Specifically under the staircase. I don't remember how we that found out during class. Possibly the kid sitting next to the window figured that out, while observing the police coming in and out with distressed teachers talking. We were trying to get the somewhat panicked yet trying to be the adult in the situation substitute teacher to confirm it, but he was brushing off our accusations. Sir is it true that the school authority is keeping us hostage in a building that might explode? If there's bomb at school, can we go home early today? The substitute finally admitted saying look, if there's a situation like this, then our principal who was once in the military can deal with it ha, so you admit there's a bomb at school we rejoiced bullying the substitute even in this crisis. At the prospect of death, we were allowed to ignore our fixed seats and seat however we wanted in a group. We talked about death and hoss parents would cry more if they died, and what impact it would have. Everyone was hugging each other like a celebration. But mostly we complained about how they weren't letting us go home. So they finally did point a sea of guardians were waiting outside of the gates with tear stained faces. And it turned in a national breaking news as they had to call a bomb squad from the capital city point turns out it was fake. A prank set up by kids from our school who never imagined ITD get this far point two kids got expelled well that happened. Oh boy do I have a lot a kid would get out of his seat in science and do two push ups only to get red in the face, sit back down and do it again like two minutes later this same kid and another kid would get out of their seats and do sit ups on the floor there was an inflatable red chair without the armrest in science and it was the ducking hunger games for who got to sit in the chair. Leaving school, a kid takes a flying head first leap onto the ground, gets up and runs away. No one said anything about it in first period math, when the teacher wasn't in the classroom after the announcements were over, one girl would stand on her chair like a soapbox and start telling us about furries during social studies, it was a normal lesson, and we had the door open, when this kid walks by and says beachnet gafak, and just keeps on walking. The science teacher made a lot of terrible, albeit funny, jokes, and at one point, a kid just got up, walked out of the room, and didn't come back for a good 5 minutes one kid during science, would periodically do stuff like, lay on the floor, slump in his chair, like he was melting, and play 10 hours of megalovania. No one even questioned it, because that was just what he was like a girl was standing on a spinny chair, and when people advised her against this, she said sorry, I can't hear you over my poor life choices, almost. Every one of these were in an honors class, so I'm convinced that the smarter we are, the less common sense we have. I've got a bit of an interesting perspective on this. 
There was a math teacher in my high school who was super smart, super well liked, a little bit eccentric, but in a good way, and had a great rapport with students. In his freshman class there was an extremely difficult exam at the end, and if you got an A he would call your parents and tell them you did a good job. It was very sweet. But again, a bit eccentric. We got on really well when I had his class, so on the first day of my senior year he walks up to me and just says, come to my third period class, I'll give you a pass to your normal class, and walks away. So obviously I show up and sit down, and as class starts he starts panning across the desks going, nope, doesn't look like any faces I know, until he gets to me, at which point he goes, you, I told you never to come back to my classroom ever again, and I'm not prepared for this at all but I go, what do you want me to do? This is the class they gave me. We go back and forth shouting at each other, until he kicks me out of the class, writes me a pass to the principal's office actually just my regular class, and I go on my way. But at the end of the semester I'm sitting in the cafeteria next to a table of freshmen and they're all looking over their new class schedules for the next semester, and one of them mentions they've got a class with this teacher, at which point all their friends start going, dude. I heard he kicked a kid out of his class on the first day of school, just because he didn't like him. So I guess it worked. Oh man, lem tell you point I had a stomach bug while a junior in HS, and I went to this charter school, so we were low budget and whatever. Well the nurse refused to let me call my parents to let them take me home, and she told me to eat some crackers. Now I knew, if I ate them crackers I was gonna be in a bad place, but this lady was just asking for it points so later my stomach is hurting and feeling bad, and we had an assembly in the lunch room. The principal was up talking about how our tests were awesome, and he was giving us a free dress day, and the students were all happy, and that was the moment I puked point I stood up instinctively I stood up, my teacher told me to sit back down, I shoved her aside and now I've two teachers coming to stop me, I guess they thought a 6 feet 1 kid was gonna walk out the back door and go home or something. The teacher I showed is yelling something about DPS points and how I'ma get a day of os and then bam, I puked all over the wall I was standing near, the two teacher who were charging at me slowed and backed off, and my puke was like an early attack, so I did some splash damage on the yelling teacher and on some of the younger students and even the nurse point everything grew quiet, a couple of my friends were laughing, and I looked around. Embarrassed, I look around and said y'all should let me go home. I have two stories that both happened in the same year one. It was the first week of school and so our teachers are doing the get to know you activites and my Spanish teacher decides to do one as well. He starts asking us what we do with friends and kids are giving the usual high school Spanish responses pasa you en rato con mis amigas to spend time with friends. After a bit we run out of things to say and he starts sharing a list of other things. The last of which he tells the class in surprise none of you mentioned this one and shows us Netflix why desk can Netflix and chill. We all start laughing our ass off while he stands there dumbfounded as to why we are laughing. The next day we come in and he's standing there apologizing for not knowing what Netflix and chill really meant. He was a great teacher though. The other story was when I was in math class with a bunch of kids who just could not care less about school. These kids would constantly talk over our poor teacher and completely ignore her all the time. After a while of this, she asked one of the kids who was one of the biggest culprits if he wants to teach the class. The kid agrees and starts talking about random stuff at the front of the class. Meanwhile the teacher has sat down in his desk. I look over and she gets out a notebook and tears out a page. I shoot her a curious look and she proceeds to crumble it into a ball and throws it at the kid she called up to teach. There was like a 5 second pause before the whole class starts throwing paper at each other and we descend into utter chaos. This goes on for practically the whole period while the teacher desperately tries to rein us back in not expecting it to get out of hand so quickly. Once we finally settle down she gives us a lecture about paying attention during class, which apparently was the whole reason she did this. Things did not improve for her unfortunately. LDR my Spanish teacher suggested we all Netflix and chill with our friends and my math teacher started a paper bull fight to teach us about paying attention. I have two one. 
I was in the third grade. This little kid named Gonzalo was known for acting up and driving our teacher up the wall. Well, he was particularly quiet one day and wasn't up to his usual antics. He told the teacher he wasn't feeling well and usually he would do this just to get out of class and be sent back from the nurse for making up a sickness. He ended up vomiting all over his desk and the floor and we had the rest of class outside. He was promptly sent to the nurse. 2. This was back in high school. One morning we were going to our second period class of the day which is usually when the morning announcements are. You could tell something was wrong because the Pledge of Allegiance is usually led by one of the students of ASB. This time it was completely skipped over and our vice principal spoke on the intercom. Apparently someone snuck into the school the night before and superglued all the classrooms in the 400 to 500 block of school. The janitor and custodial staff were going nuts trying to locate a locksmith and get classrooms open for the teachers and students. They ended up going to the old gym to just sit and basically a class day was wasted for those who had class in those rooms. They offered a $300 reward for anyone to snitch on the kid slash s who did it. Granted, it was absolutely vandalism, so I understand the severity of the situation. Turns out, one of the guys I dated and his friends did it. He was drunk one night and started spilling the tea and his friend told him to shut the fuck up, but we pretty much figured it out that it was them. One time one of the girls in my class was honestly being the biggest hoe. She would come on to all of the boys, purposely bring bananas to school to act like she was deep throating them, dry hump the chairs, twerk at dances, and fling her boobs around while biting her lip. It really made me uncomfortable, but I'm very passive, so I didn't say anything. One day we had a sub in math, and I guess she thought it was her duty to make sure she hoed to the maximum around him. It was almost the end of class and the sub was passing out homework. He handed her the homework and she asked excuse me sir, how about instead of me doing this homework, you do me like homework, you know, slam me on the table and do me all night. She then winked. The sub was clearly uncomfortable and a little disturbed. He then asked her how old she was and she replied with does it really matter? I'm hot and I want you. She started to get a little agitated. I was really really nervous and grossed out. The room was silent. The sub stared at her for a good minute. You need therapy. The sub told Ho Ho then proceeded to get up, push the sub onto the desk, sit on his lap and bite her lip. One of the kids was sort of the class clown and he was fed up with the situation. He picked up his water bottle and threw it at the Ho's head. She cried and said she was going to report the sub to her parents. I was flabbergasted and honestly thankful that it had ended. Don't worry, ho remains a ho, and I still despise her as. I have a few. Last year, in my friend's science class, it was the beginning of the school year and the teacher was showing the class pictures from a hiking trip he and his wife went on over the summer. Upon seeing the teacher's wife in one of the pictures, this one boy says, dude, your wife's hot. Later in the year, he asked the teacher who helped out with the class, who was pregnant at the time, told the class she was pregnant with twins. The same kid asks, if I smoke, will I get pregnant? And also the classic where do babies come from, A Fist fight occurred in the Spanish room down the hallway, I was in social studies when this happened, and one of the kids was knocked unconscious there were 5 or 6 bomb threats made against my school point we had a lockdown that wasn't a drill, and everyone thought it was serious, until it was revealed to us after the lockdown was over, that some 6th grader accidentally called a lockdown on one of the teacher's phones. At my school, every teacher has a phone in their classroom. There is a sticker on the phone with a certain number there to call a lockdown. In my social studies class, the teacher had left the room and left us alone for about 8 minutes. This group of boys on the side of the classroom opposite from where I was started singing the song Take Me Home, Country Roads. This one kid takes out the school assigned chroma books we have and opens it up and the person sitting next to him tells everyone to shut up. All is quiet except for the sound of the first line of Take Me Home country roads coming from the chroma book. After class, someone starts singing it in the hallway, and the entire hallway ends up singing take me home, country roads, today. At lunch, a boy was sitting at a lunch table close to mine with a bunch of girls. At one point during our 25 minute lunch period, 
He starts singing slash rapping sicko mode to the girls. A few lunch tables clapped after he finished, including mine. Then, a table of boys next to his call over the lunch monitor, and those boys, the boy who was singing, and the girls all talked to the lunch monitor, and now there's a possibility that tomorrow, he might sing either sicko mode or another song at lunch, with a microphone, there's a microphone and speaker in my school's cafeteria for the principal slash assistant principal or principals to make announcements. It hasn't happened yet, and I don't know if it will, but I will post an update tomorrow. Not my current school, but an old 1.0, when we moved from elementary to middle school, our group of kids turned out to be factoreds I mean factoreds, and idiotic but I will just do the handful of incidents who go along relatively the same point so towards the end of the second half of my 6th grade year, we had a lot of kids doing technology violations, basically kids who would go on to sites during whatever time and not do work, the sites in question normally being games or YouTube. And most of the incidents would happen during SDL, self-directed learning, or remediation, remediation being an hour long time towards the end of the day of SDL, the kids could work on whatever they wanted during remediation, but each class would have SDL, so if it were in math it would be math focused SDL, science being science focused SDL. Geography and English being surrounded by their appropriate subjects like math and science point now the first instance, at least from what I heard of during my time there, was when one of the kids went on to Yautab during geography SDL, when he should have not been, actually there was no time in the day when it could be allowed, and he begun watching girls twerking, he should been in 7th grade, but he was held back in 6th when me, and well our group was in 5th point then another kid decided to best that, and decided to begin watching Bornhub during remediation. Nobody was sexually harassing each other, just decided to do something they could've done in their free time, but clearly had no patience. This story isn't so much from a classroom, but I happened during school, so I'm going to count it. I have this one friend, and he is risk taker of sorts. And by that I mean he does stuff he shouldn't like through food across the lunchroom and part of a war between his table and another. This soon escalated quickly, when he started to take food outside for recess. Now before I go on, we are in 8th grade and our recesses are usually uneventful and boring, so if this doesn't sound as funny as I think it is, that's way. But anyway, it just started out as carrots and some other solid foods, then he started taking out slushy cups with the foil lid, and would eat them across the turf. One time he stuck 6 carrots in one of them, called it an infinity gauntlet, and when a teacher asked him why he did it, he said that it brought a smile to his face. He then took it out to recess and he eat it over half the grade. Then, he was at the school over the weekend for something, and apparently hid a giant bag of cranberries in a tire just off of the turf. When we went outside, he quickly ran to it before any teachers came out, and proceeded to throw it across the turf, busting it open, and spraying cranberries everywhere. He also hid a packet of that powder you mix with water to create mashed potatoes, but a kid who I, unfortunately, call a friend handed it into the teachers, and stopped the eating of any more cranberries. When the teachers found out what happened, they stopped the flow of kids through the doors back inside, but I was lucky enough to get through before that happened. The school even took it as far as to look back at the security footage that was taken by the camera literally right above the tire the ammo was hidden in. He was called down to the office later that day, and was sent out to clean up all the cranberries. The end point P point S. This is my first post to r slash s credit, so I hope you liked it. Ahhh I've got a story, tldr, this is long, because it's really about one student's tantrum, and how her one tantrum was somehow worse than the student who usually multiple meltdowns ok so this all happened at my culinary school. I was in a small class with all women, the youngest being about 18 and the oldest being in her 50s. One woman, we'll call Sam, short for student A, had a one year old child. She clearly didn't like kids in general, and seemed to barely tolerate her daughter. She complained when her nanny wasn't there on weekend and this woman clearly hated doing schoolwork, or doing any work in general. This doesn't really have to do with anything, it's just to set the mood of a woman who lives in comfort, because she could hire a nanny, and didn't need to work after school, and could complain about having to care for her child by herself over the weekends. 
Now, for some backstory, there was another student who well call SB, student B, in our class who had already set the bar pretty low for poor classroom behavior. For example, I was threatened when I stated that it was SB's bread in the oven. SB was furious that I had seemingly suggested that she wasn't paying attention to her decorative bread in the oven. We were in culinary school and almost everyone else had gotten their breads out and someone was wondering out loud whose bread was the last in the oven. SB also threw tantrums and would just walk out of class without saying anything if she hated what we were making in class. She refused to work in groups and would never talk to her partner if she was forced into a pair. She even went as far as to fake a pregnancy. My mom is a dowler, my sister is a midwife, and I've worked with pregnant animals, so I know a bit about pregnancy and gestational lengths and facts considering I myself has never been pregnant. The point is, SB has set the bar for classroom behavior so low because of her constant drama and antisocial behavior that no one could possibly beat her in poor classroom etiquette, right? Wrong point Sam might have complained about her kid a lot and had a clear financial cushion because she stated several times that she would never need to work after school. That being said, she did beautiful work on cakes and decorating. She was just lazy. One day, we had about 30 minutes left in class. We had to clean our dishes and wipe down the table. Not hard, not even boring. We can talk and tidy up our class and ask each other about things we were curious about the new recipes we learned. Sa did not want to clean. She was being lazy. So she just stood there and then walked up to our chef, who was a big guy, usually kind and productive but pretty strict as a veteran from the army. She asked chef if she could leave. He shakes his head and says that we only have 25 minutes left. She looks irritated and asked him why not. He gestured to the rest of us. We were all bouncing around and sweeping slash doing dishes slash drying dishes slash wiping the table slash etc. He commented that we'd all get to leave quickly if everyone pitched in to clean. It doesn't take that long to clean. She keeps on insisting that she should be allowed to leave and ultimately started screaming at chef complaining that he hadn't let her leave despite her saying she was ill. She had never mentioned a potential illness. He kept his cool the entire time, shockingly. He told her that had he known she was ill, he would have of course let her leave with no deduction to her grade. But by this time, she was in a rage. She just wanted to scream. He was so calm while she cursed at him, dropping the f-bomb numerous times. She even threw her knife kit on the ground when he suggested slash insisted that she leave in exasperation. He kept insisting she leave, that she should get out, if that was her attitude. Mind you, it's not that he didn't believe she was ill or anything. It's that she literally never said anything about it until she started yelling. He's a pretty nice guy and generally pretty forgiving. He just expects you to put the work in. So when she tried pulling sheet to not have to clean, he didn't want to give in to her. And she definitely wasn't sick. She was talking earlier in the class about how she loved that she never got sick. Basically, she blew up in a matter of minutes and screamed for about 15 minutes and eventually stormed out with 5 minutes left in class. Some people like me caught the whole thing because we were cleaning the class, but some people missed it all because they were stuck behind the dish pit. Once she stormed out, chef turned to me and told me yeah, no she's not jet in points today. That she doesn't fly by me. Thanks for cleaning and staying focused. The next morning, I saw her in the locker room. She complained to me about how awful chef was to her. I didn't say anything and quickly finished getting in uniform. I went to class and chef made a brief announcement to the rest of us before Sa showed up. He stated that behavior like hers would not be tolerated and that we wouldn't speak of it again after that. She never apologized and he never addressed it again after that. Okay so I wish I could say that this was a one time situation, but nope it was reoccurring. I had this reading teacher in 7th grade that always had red eyes and talked like she was a surfer dude that was living on his last brain cell. And she always would crawl under her desk and either shake pills or huff something. And when she would crawl back into her chair, she would complain about dropping something or would tell the class how her contacts were bothering her. So, we naturally ignored her routine strange behavior and continued to read or small talk to our groups. 
One day, I remember distinctly that she was so messed up that she started writing gibberish on the whiteboard. And we were all confused by whatever she was writing. She would start writing straight, but then her words would trail down, like she was developing scoliosis mid-sentence. She had written about half of the whiteboard full of this when she rested her forehead on the board. She then proceeded to slide her head down the whiteboard and erase a long line of her gibberish before collapsing in the floor. She then crawled to a chair and started telling us how her daughter was sick the night before, so she didn't get any sleep blah blah blah. So she slept at the student desk she collapsed in. But we couldn't leave the classroom until she released us so everyone in that classroom not only missed our recess but some of the kids missed the bus because she didn't wake up until school let out. When she woke up, she didn't know time had passed and tried to continue teaching to us. Not long after that, she disappeared. I wonder what she's up to. Some stories from my science classes, we were doing a unit on chemical reactions in chemistry, and as a sort of fun demonstration we got to light our hands on fire and not burn ourselves. Including myself, only 9 kids did it. We all had fun playing with fire, when one kid got a bright idea. They got a huge chunk of the bubble foam, and when it was lit on fire it hit the ceiling tiles. Thankfully the fire alarms didn't go off. The scorch marks are still there to this day. In physics my senior year we had practical tests of sorts for each unit slash chapter we did to give us real world examples of how physics works. Our first was dropping a raw egg from the bleachers onto our teacher running below, the next was something related to golf balls, and the last in that unit was related to projectiles. Our teacher brought out a homemade slingshot for us to use, and some water balloons. We took it out to test it out, and get a feel for how to consistently launch the balloons. Then we got our angles, and went to work figuring out where he had to stand, so we could hit him. He didn't expect any of us to be able to hit him, because the weather had been bad, and wind messes with projectiles. One of my classmates volunteered as tribute point launch day comes. We haul everything out there, and our teacher lays out the grading rules. We all settle in to launch our balloons. The third group goes up. They launch it. It hits the guy right in the balls. This guy was not very well liked so everyone was stifling their laughter as much as they could point we were at the end of astronomy with a week left. A month before our teacher had asked what we wanted to learn about if we had time after our last planned unit. One of the options was learning about nuclear energy. Guess what was picked? We learned more in depth about nuclear energy and different reactors, but obviously everyone was more interested in how a nuclear bomb was made point problem was he was kind of reluctant to talk about it for obvious reasons. Finally, one kid got the bright idea of saying a meltdown is a small explosion, using Chernobyl as an example. This got him going, because he's one of those where, if he ask a question with wrong info, he will do everything in his power to make sure you get the right info and understand it. Our teacher explained to us how to build a nuclear bomb, the refining process to make a bomb, how it works, and what level of purity you need to make an effective bomb. He got this oh sheet look on his face when the bell rang and everyone thanked him for explaining how to make a bomb. In grade school I used to pretty much never do my science homework. I didn't like science. It still blows my mind since I ended up becoming a BO major but that's beside the point point. So I'm sitting in lunch detention, as usual, this was 7th grade, doing the homework from the night before. And one of my old science teachers, Miss Costello, rolls in to talk to my, at the time, current science teacher, Miss Johnson. She says something along the lines of, you gotta check this out, never minding me, and I look up, to see the big screen changing from screensaver to the final slide of a presentation basically copy pasted from the textbook. Same as every presentation, now I remember why I hated science, and then to Yahoo, and then to a picture of a voluptuous ginormous titied, fake tanned lady tightly and scantily clad all in leather. Miss J's like, oh ye, and they proceed to objectify this born chick for about a minute before Miss J gasps and makes this weird noise cross between a cry and an audible, or fack and hastily closes all the windows and turnings off the projector. Miss C is just staring at me shocked, while Miss J goes, um, osmosis, and Miss C demands to know why I always have lunch detention. I don't even know what kind of look I had on my face. 
I go, os, mosis, and she tells me to get a class, as if it isn't called lunch detention for a reason. I dipped I never had lunch detention with Ms. J again. I had the rest of the year's work of classes with her though, and she pretty much never looked at me the same, again. For my part, I didn't snitch, but it was definitely a, so that happened kind of moment point osmosis, edit, thought I'd include what grade I was in. My school was in a slightly up and coming, but still shady area point some events were very memorable point I recall one time we were sitting in the computer lab, class had started, and we were working on millisecond word I think. One of the class bullies was walking into the classroom, late as usual when all of a sudden he did a lurch forward seeming to be struck from behind. He ran down the stairs chasing after the assailant and eventually came back to class. We noticed a puddle of blood in the doorway, and I was sitting closest to it. He came back in rather nonchalantly, and comes up to me. Hey, am I bleeding? He turned his back to me as he did this, and I saw a tear through his jacket and blood oozing from a wound. I replied, I think you've been stabbed mate. A-H-H sheet, apostrophe the rest of the lesson was conducted with police and forensics teams taking photographs, while we continued with learning how to cut and paste. He was away for a long time which was sort of okay, because he was in his hole, but it was pretty serious. The knife missed his spine by about an inch, and went in around 4 inches. Apparently he got into a fight with some kids from another school and they came down tooled up to deal with it point another time. A bunch of guys smoked a joint in the back of the classroom and the teacher only response was, is someone burning paper. Maths teacher was also fun. She would lock us in the classroom over break time whilst she sat there silently as punishment for being badly behaved. One kid eventually caves and goes fuck this as clat in a Jamaican accent, which made it so much more enjoyable to hear. He then slid open the window and we watched him jump from the third floor, land on his feet, and scurry after the lunch hall. Even the teacher started cracking up. The best outburst by a teacher was a teacher who went down as a legend. One kid was extremely disruptive and started doing an Egyptian style mummy dance standing on the table. Teacher had to deal with his sheet for years, clearly couldn't handle this prick anymore. He grabbed him by his throat and pushed him up against the wall, pushed him out of the classroom then threw a chair at him for good measure. Well deserved tbh point good old days. Two history teachers in my school, one teaches solely app economics the other teaches solely app human geography, are very friendly with each other. So much so that they both fuck with each other. Regularly. I'll call them Mr. HG and Mr. E for the purposes of documenting their shenaniganry. One day in Mr. HG's class a slip of paper was put under the door. He keeps it closed since he lectures, and the door won't stay ajar, so he goes to it and picks it up. It's blank. Odd but whatever right. It happened 20 more times in less than 50 minuets. Next day, in Mr. E's class he was just completely dying over his mischief. Apparently it was Mr. HG's turn to fill up the printer, and since he didn't Mr. E decided to fack with him for three bells. I've also had Mr. HG frantically run into the classroom and exclaim things such as glad your foot's going to fall off soon, and economics is a nerd's conspiracy perhaps the strangest times are, when Mr. E comes into Mr. HG's classroom, and screeches looks at the students and walks out. This has happened many times over the year, he also sings poorly to music. I see both sides of this amazing interaction, because I have both their classes, might sound normal but this is a large school and most don't take those two apps the same year, they have, by far, the least facts given attitude, while giving perhaps the biggest care for the school and students. They have the best testing average and it's all in good nature and it's amazing. I forgot to mention. Mystery also screeches in his own classroom, he stands on desks, makes inside jokes, and is, in general. Quiet insane, fear great ha ha ha, but good lord it's concerning the first few dozen times they pulled that nonsense. The My high school has this period called tutorial, where you go back to your first period room and sleep, go to the gas station for food, or do homework, like the school wants you to. This was my junior year, where my attendance was maybe 5%. I showed up to my first tutorial period in two terms and the school was doing some kind of readathon. 
Of course, most teachers encourage kids to read or at least listen to a book during the 45 minutes, but they weren't going to enforce it with the full weight of the law or some sheet point well, except for the substitute teacher in my tutorial class. Me, being me, just opened up a book on my tablet and laid my head down, so it gave the appearance I was reading. A classmate who I was friendly with was working on a book report. This substitute teacher came and patrolled the desk rows and interrogated those who weren't reading. The substitute comes to her and asks what she's doing. I'm working on a book report. My classmate responds with three or four papers and the book on her desk. Well, you need to be reading, the substitute says, a little aggressively. I have an email from the principal saying all students should read. The class is watching this confrontation now, looking incredulously at the sub. Half of us weren't working or had a book out. The classmate responds this is a period where we can work on whatever we like. We don't have to be reading. The sub smells a challenge. Well, I have an email from the principal saying all students need to be reading. She's damn near yelling at this point. My classmate ignores her and continues working. Substitute storms over to the teacher's desk and dials a number. The class is looking around at each other completely bewildered. Hello. The sub loudly says. Yes, I need an officer down here. There's a student here refusing to do work and is arguing with me. Yes, yes alright. Thank you so much. Substitute slams down the phone. I'll give you one more warning. She says to my classmate. The class is shocked. This 4.0 girl just had our school officer called on her because a sub has a complex. Classmate looks at her and says are you serious? Sub gets injury. Classmate leaves with the resource officer without complaint and she didn't get in trouble afterward same sub in a class I didn't have. Had she called the resource officer on two boys who high-fived across the room. That was more than her 10th call that day. In high school, we had an assembly where a small theater troupe presented Pithy Be Tolerant, Don't Be Racist, skits, and then opened the floor to discussion. This was a bad idea point not saying my school was disgustingly racist, but people were white and dumb as hell, and we were a huge auditorium. This was the worst moderated event I'd ever seen. One person raised their hand, the person with the mic would run to them, they'd say their charged point, someone else across the auditorium would say something as well, person with the mic would run to them. No one was able to respond back and forth in reasonable debate, and no one stopped this from happening. The points got more and more charged, and I sank lower and lower in my seat. Point one of the white kids cited Irish oppression as proof they understood racism. One of the other white kids told the small percentage of black kids that they were privileged because they were allowed to go to school here, they were bussed in from a different part of the city. At one point, the moderators tried to define the difference between prejudice and structural racism, not that it did any good. The teachers around me got paler and paler. This went on for half an hour. They didn't get to half the skits they planned point the second assembly, same thing, different group of students did not open the floor to questions. The rest of the week was spent learning about active listening in English class. It happened when I was around 12 years old point so one day we got locked up in our classroom by the English teacher because we pissed him off and he wanted to punish us I guess question mark. 10 minutes pass and we were all confused, wondering if it was for real. So some guys go to both doors, one in the back and the other at front of the class and yeah, we were trapped for sure and the teacher was chilling outside the door. So at this I was just sitting at my desk annoyed by the fact I can't get home earlier. But then the situation is starting to escalate very quickly. Some of my friends start trying to kick open the door, but that wasn't happening anytime soon. One of the girls is slowly freaking out and proceeds to have a huge mental breakdown which leads to a panic attack. Other girls are starting to panic too. We told the other teacher through the door what was going on, but he didn't believe us. Another friend of mine did us says, if you don't free us, I'm calling the police. Lol. Next thing you know he called the police and told them what was going on 15 minutes later a police officer opens the door. Our teacher had handcuffs on and they took the girls that had lost their sheets to the ambulance. Never heard about this teacher ever again point I have other stories about teachers slapping students, baiting teachers into drinking vodka and my whole class getting chased on the street by the police. 
this didn't happen to me as a student, but rather my daughter's first parent-teacher conference in first grade. Catholic school. Me, my wife and my daughter went into the classroom to talk to her teacher. She points at the table and chairs to sit down. They were the first graders chairs. Very low to the ground. Very small. The teacher proceeds to tell us how wonderful, smart, helpful, and polite our daughter is. Major shocker. She's everything but at home. As she's going over her grades my nose starts to tingle. I feel a sneeze coming. I'm typically one that lets it out, but since she just told me how polite and well-mannered my child is, and it's a Catholic school, so I better act the same. So I sneezed, but held it tight. Then it happened. I let out a little VRRRRT as I sneezed from tensing too much. I immediately said oh my god. So sorry. Face beat red. Teacher's face beat red, but she played it off, like she didn't hear it. I looked over at my wife, and she was laughing so hard inside a tear came out. Then I completely lost it. Laughed way harder than I should have. I asked to be excused to try and get my childish behavior under control. 30 seconds later I decide grow up and get in there. As soon as I opened the door my immaturity came right back. Laughed my ass off again. Told the teacher and my wife I'll be in the car. All the while my daughter was sitting back behind us embarrassed as hell. Needless to say the farter didn't make it back to any conferences. It sucks that I'm late to the party, but I've got a good one point, so my junior year chemistry teacher was just a bit strange. Nice guy but he stepped to the beat of his own drum. He liked to lay on the tables and tell us stories from his youth, like when he accidentally did whippets and how he would have been a genius if he didn't eat so much lead as a kid. I could go on and on about stories about him and he only lasted 6 or so weeks before he got fired and that where the story gets good. So I guess he was frustrated with the school because they hadn't made the repairs or replaced the vent hood like he wanted. To prove his point he planned a new sanctioned experiment to overwhelm the exhaust vent during a scheduled fire drill. He prepped us with this knowledge and instructed us to chant his name as we walked out of class during the fire drill. I guess something happened and the fire drill got moved to another day. Oh well Mr. S thought and decided to do his experiment anyway. As he dropped gummy bears into some sort of vat of acid, thick smoke starts bellowing out and quickly overwhelmed the outdated exhaust hood and begins filling the classroom. Mr. S stands on his desk and shouts quick children to the windows we laugh because obviously he's joking. Nope seriously this gas is poisonous to the windows. So we rush to the windows to inhale non-toxic air then the fire alarm finally goes off. As instructed we march through the hallways chanting his name. Administration was not pleased point a week later I saw Mr. S as I was leaving school. He was picking up his daughter who was in the class at the time. I see him. Hey Mr. S how's it going? Hey, Chester. I'm on the outside looking in now. Maniacal laugh. The exhaust hood never got replaced. There was this kid who always harassed everyone. One day he tried to break into the classroom, normal occurrence. The teacher gave the class a not this sheet again look and called reception for backup teachers. Yes it was that hard to contain this kid. There was a ramp leading up to the classroom with railings on the side. The teachers arrive and faking surrounded him and blocked of all exits like he was a escaped convict. When the class teacher thought he was distracted she opened the door. Now to give credit to this kid he was annoying as fuck but he was certainty slick. So when the class teacher opened the door he slipped past her like it was nothing and with no hesitation not breaking a sweat faking dolphin dived underneath the closest table. He then crawled faster than a mole to other tables. Then he started biting random kids legs. A few kids started screaming, but we thought it was because the kid brushed by them. Then one kid yelled he's biting my legs. Everyone immediately pulled away from the tables, got out of their chairs and backed up against the wall. After a squad of teachers showed up we were ushered outside. Now the door to the classroom was see-through, so we could see everything. All the kids pushed up against the door. Luckily I was tall, so I could still see. I was also joined by two other tall kids. We watched the whole thing go down. It was like a person trying to capture a very scared cat. It went on for one hour. When they finally get him, five teachers have to help to get him out. We waited for 10 minutes and our classroom teacher came back. 
Everyone wanted to know what happened, but the teacher told us to quit asking and get back to work. This was playground talk for months. Nobody would go close to the kid who did it except for his very close friends. We never were told what happened to the kid, but teachers were always watching so it probably not good. Not a student but a teacher. Moved to Prague to teach English in 2003. Final week of the TEFL certification was teaching classes which were free and open to the general public. Had a complete mix of people from different backgrounds, ages, all slices of life. Third day one guy in his mid-twenties starts berating a girl in her early twenties for her broken pronunciation and such. Finally says she should just shut the fuck up as she was only good in bed without opening her mouth. Turns out she was 19, just moved to Prague from Ukraine on her own, trying to make ends meet, while enrolled in the local university, and working part time as a prostitute, and he had been one of her clients a few weeks earlier, just happened to end up in my class together. I was a noob, reeling and trying to regain control as the two went back and forth as the rest of the students gasped and murmured. Mind you I was being peer reviewed in the moment and there was an instructor from the TEFL school monitoring. I had had enough and interrupted the dude and threatened to kick him the fuck out. The girl then went on to basically calling him out, pointing out that he obviously couldn't get a girl in bed without paying for it and that, if he just thought about and considered the way he objectified women he wouldn't be feeling pathetic and victimizing her. Mick dropped, dude left, didn't return for the rest of the classes. The next class, after I asked her if she was okay with addressing what had happened, we had a great discussion about society and social norms, and how we all strive to do whatever it takes to better our situation, etc. I like to think we all learned STH about being open and accepting without being judgmental and empathizing in situations which arise that challenge our experiences and beliefs. Like to think that that girl is now running her own language school or SDHLs fulfilling and enjoyable. Two stories once in the middle of class the perv of the school, who I was friends with at the time, shouted, I think blank looks sexy in leggings. The class was almost dead silent. No idea what was going through his head for him to say that. What made it worse was the kid he was talking about was one of the most wholesome and a pure being. If anyone that thought of her in that way, you knew they were a faking creep. He got detention. Everyone quickly dismissed it afterwards. Here's a story that seems like r slash fathopend. I was going from p point e to Spanish and me being the unfit fattest I am. I'm really tired. On my way there a guy yelled yo Juan. No idea why he called me Juan, but whatever I didn't care, I was tired. He offers to grab my hand while blocking my path. So I shake his hand hoping he'd move. Nope. He grabs my hand, holds it tight and pulls a knife on me. He doesn't really do anything, except point it to my stomach and laugh, thinking he scared the sheet out of me. I was so tired that I couldn't process what the hell was going on and just simply gave him a blank stare. He laughs a bit more and lets me pass. Didn't think much of it until I finally regained some energy and was like whoa I could haste died then. Anyway I didn't tell the teacher he has a knife cause 1, I was tired and just wanted to go home, 2 my school doesn't really enforce rules, so chances are he probs get a slap on the wrist. I didn't want him jumping me after school cause I snitched. Luckily he never did anything bad with it. So yeah. 12th grade of high school. Me and some friends were eating at a lunch table. There was some commotion going on behind the 7 foot brick wall in our cafeteria, that is across our table. The entire cafeteria had their attention drawn to that place, because there must have been 50 to 100 people surrounding that place. So one of our friends is contemplating whether to throw an apple over there, just for the fun of it. We keep daring him to do it, but he folds under pressure and refuses. Luckily some guy leaned over to our table and said he would do it. That friend gives him the apple, and he chucks it over the brick wall. Everyone hears a giant thud sound as it hits the library window behind the wall and the entire cafeteria goes ooh. The kid goes full Assassin Creed mood as is unseen by administrators, when they look over to where they think the apple was thrown from. Apple Kid calmly gets up to throw away his lunch and no rush and leaves the crime scene. Administrators interrogate table by table including ours which had the student president and valedictorian of the junior grade say no, and they easily believed it. 
Not a soul ratted him out, but the cameras in the lunchroom caught the kid in the act, and he had to clean up the mess. The craziest part of it was that witness in the commotion said the apple hit the library window and a piece of it broke off and went into a girl's mouth who almost choked on it. La la la. It was the greatest thing I've ever seen and most memorable high school moment. Background. My junior year of high school, I had a pre-calc teacher who was rather rigid. The rumor was that he had diagnosed OCD. I never saw him have any compulsions, but calling him a perfectionist would be an understatement. On 9 over 11, the students in his class didn't know anything had happened until the next hour. Evidently, he was pulled out into the hallway, informed of what had happened, and went back inside and complained about the interruption. I had him later that day, and he was the only teacher who had a full real class that day, assigned homework, etc. Point anyway, one day, he was drawing a line using his normal yardstick on the chalkboard. He pulled the yardstick away, and, I don't know, it wasn't parallel enough to the ground? So he got out his spray bottle and towel, and washed it away, because the erasers left too much mess behind, and tried again. We were all sort of used to the odd thing being unacceptable to him, so this wasn't out of the ordinary. After that, though, he still didn't get it right. Third, fourth, fifth try, still not good enough, and each attempt was getting worse. Finally, he threw the chalk against the board and said I can't do this, and walked out of class. Now, he was one of those teachers who would take points off of homework if you talked out of turn, even if class hadn't started yet. So, after this happened, the classroom was silent, partially out of shock, partially for fear that he'd come back in and lose it even further if he found us talking. He didn't come back to class at all that day, but the next day, he came in and taught, no explanation, no apologies, just acted like the whole thing hadn't happened. High school story, high school sucked, and most teachers either didn't care, or were really unfair. So my friends and I would do small stupid stuff, to make the day go by faster. But this was one of our bigger operations some of my friends had a English class together with this teacher who, according to them, was sent from hell. But she had an extra desk chair that students could sit in. If you sit in it and spin it in a certain way it makes a popping noise, it was dubbed the nickname the bop chair. My friends would always sit in it and bop and laugh, and she hated it. She threatened to take it away if they continued. That can't happen. The next day she was out, and they had a sub who was known for not noticing anything. I'm in another class and I get a message from them asking for people to come take the chair and hide it for them. Me and two friends respond and grab hall passes and go. We go outside to the courtyard and near the classroom window and sure enough it's open and our friends are on the other side. They then hand it the base and then the chair to put together. We get the chair together and roll it to a nearby classroom where we asked a teacher if we could keep it there for the day. He said yes without looking at us. Fast forward to the end of the day. We go to get the chair and start to roll it to the parking lot to take home when we are stopped by the cross country coach slash doc. He knows us and asks what we are doing with the chair. My friend quickly responds with her everyone needs a chair he paused and says you're right and walks away point the chair now lives in my friend's house and is his cat's favorite spot to sit point eldr. We took the bop chair from one of our teachers and still have it 5 years later. Freshman English in high school. Our teacher was young and honestly pretty hot so she likely was relatively new. She was having us come up one by one to discuss progress on a research project we were doing while the rest of the class was doing independent research point a kid with some potential anger slash behavioral slash maybe no issues went up with his work and you could audibly hear it wasn't going that well he wasn't fully prepared hadn't put in enough work and she was calling him on it and telling him he needed to do more but he was getting really upset about it he was walking past me back to his seat and I could see he was seething with rage, like almost shaking, and he takes his fist full of index cards and just chucks them at the wall. Cards fly everywhere, and he turns around and shouts at her why, won't you listen to me? She just stands up, looks at him calmly, and says I gave you valid critiques on your work and you need to be more mature about this. I suggest you take your seat before you make this any worse for yourself. He sits down without saying anything, and the class is dead quiet. Teacher picks up the phone, 
and asks security to come down and address the situation. Still the class is silent. A couple minutes later a security guard comes and removes the kid from the classroom and we just go about our day. This was 13 years ago and I still remember it vividly. Couple of them come to mind point for some inexplicable reason one teacher decided it would be a good idea to do a pre-read of all the test questions before letting us start the test he had just handed us I got distracted and forgot it was a test and blurted out the answer to one of the questions. To which the teacher responded welp, that's a free point I guess. Replacement teacher, original one went on burnout leave, smacked a student, don't remember if the student he hit was a guy or a girl but. You know that scene in Fresh Prince of Bel-Air whenever Jazz is escorted off the premises? Yeah point it happened so fast we barely registered it, but one second, that student is recoiling in pain and the next the teacher is flying out the door and slamming into the lockers outside the door and a moment later the student who threw him out, who was considered to be one of the biggest troublemakers in school, is picking the teacher back up by the collar, lifting him up, and smashing him into the lockers again, and saying if you ever lay your hands. On a student again I will personally deliver your teeth to whatever hospital the ambulance drives you to. The next week we had a new teacher for that class. The next year I saw that teacher again. He was repainting the sum of the walls same troublemaker student from hash 2. I use quotes because he's one of the few dudes who stepped up and put a stop to sheet when the bullying was getting especially bad. Teacher, that's it. I'm fed up with you. I'm going to go get the principal leaves room. Student jumps out second story window into a snow bank below and bolts as an aside regarding that dude just being seen talking to him for more than a minute outside the classroom by a member of faculty was enough for you to be put on a list, be pulling into the principal's office to be questioned about said interaction and have faculty treat any issues that might happen to you as you being the cause rather than the victim. Some dude was showing around a picture of his ridiculously hot 19 year old sister posing in lingerie with the words can't wait till you're finally 16 little brother. Handwritten in decidedly jolly handwriting point no clue if the writing was a joke or not but others did confirm she was indeed his sister, was indeed ridiculously hot, and had started modeling when she was 16 or 17. I've got good ones, I've got bad ones my study hall is in a room connected to a different classroom and I have to walk through that first classroom to get there and a boy in 9th grade is getting ratted out by the teacher. He was wearing ripped jeans that had several inch long rips in the thigh and you could faintly see whatever underwear he had on underneath. I'm surprised it took until third period until someone called him out. It was even worse. Since that day we all had to attend the funeral for a teacher who had passed the last weekend, and the teacher yelling at the student was super close to the one who had passed point the funeral in, and of itself is a well that happened moment. This was earlier this week, and I still hear stories of senior girls crying over the loss of the teacher, and freshman boys laughing because they thought the teacher in question wasn't as fun as some of the others and didn't deserve to be cried for. I personally wasn't super close to her, but she was a very nice woman and did a lot of other things to point in my physics class. Several of us failed a test, myself included. I'm not taking physics to take the app exam, but our teacher screams at us for 15 to 20 minutes about how crap the test was and that we shouldn't expect to even think about taking the app exam. The only thing that kept me from walking out crying was my best friend being my lab partner. Not in the classroom, but my sophomore year we won the big homecoming competition by a landslide and didn't even let the seniors look at whatever the spirit stick we had was. We rubbed it in their faces, standing at the front during the game, mentioning it to every senior we passed for the next months, etc. So this is absolutely going to sound like r slash fathopend, but I absolutely sheet you not this is true point so, 7th grade in our second home room. It was a charter school, they had to fill the time somehow, we were all doing whatever we could to keep busy. Miss Smith, changed because honestly I forgot it, was a younger teacher who was definitely a child at heart. She and Kevin, name changed, I could never forget the madlet, had an intense discussion about something. 
I don't remember what, I was neck deep in a really good book, and not paying attention point Ms. Smith's childishness showed, when she decided to cover Kevin's fabric binder in chalk dust point Kevin decided to put chalk dust on her chair in retaliation point it quickly devolved into them chasing each other around the room with erasers, everyone else just watching in laughter. At some point it went from chalkboard erasers to Ms. Smith's shoes and that's not even the worst of it. Turns out the dean was patrolling the halls and heard the commotion. The door knob turned and everyone immediately played it cool. She asked Miss Smith if everything was alright, and Miss Smith, trying to hide the fact her shoes had become her arms, said as conspicuously as possible that everything was fine. After that, it just stopped. Not another word was said. I really don't know why. In the 7th grade, at Charles Drew Middle School in the early 2000s in South Central Los Angeles, I'm in my English class listening to the teacher lecture when we hear a commotion outside. Some gang members were fighting right outside our class. As our teacher opened the door, one kid flew into our class and slid across the floor. Before the teacher could turn around to look at the kid, two other kids ran in and started beating the kid up. All of this was going on while our teacher yelled what the fuck is going on. He tried stopping the two other kids, but they then jumped him. Before I knew it, more kids started pouring into our class. Some were with the other kid on the floor and the others were with the other two kids. My English teacher did some kind of Chuck Norris kick on one of the boys and sent his as flying onto some empty desk. They all started pilling on the teacher, but he was much stronger than the 7th and 8th grade kids, and promptly laid them out cold on the floor one at a time. Some ran though, he didn't lay every single one down, but managed to knock out about 6 kids he also took a chair to the face. He had a gash on his cheek, where the metal part of the chair hit him. Our school was dismissed early that day as the cops and school security came to apprehend the kids. On that day, there were gang fights all over our school and some of the teachers' vehicles were burned or damaged with fire. Yeah, the gang banging kids tried lighting up one of the teacher parking areas with paper and other stuff faking idiots. I was never personally involved in gangs, if you are curious. I was in magnet classes most of my life in the LA County schools, so the whole gang violence was a reminder that the hood still existed. I've lost two people to gang violence. My 7th grade best friend and my cousin, both within a year or two apart, deaths. Both of them mistaken for gang members living in the wrong area all while walking home from school. Their killers have remained at large point I was actually fortunate enough one time to while attending that school. I was about to get jumped one day, but a cop just so happened to be turning into the corner I was in and stepped in to stop the gang bangers who were surrounding and grabbing me. Since that day, I never walked home alone again. I always waited for my mom or grandma to pick me up point I also left that school after 7th grade. That was right after my friend had just gotten gunned down at. Like the year after that my cousin fell victim to it too. Both killed while walking back home. Both innocent victims. Reflecting back on it now, especially as a Cal State student, most of my peers and friends find my stories unbelievable. Even I can't believe I made it out with so much adversity. They can't believe that I experienced some of these things, but then I whip out my old IDs with my old addresses, and they quiet down point I've got other crazier stories too, also from school, but those happened during lunch, or after school outside the classroom, but inside school area, there was a school shooting, when I was in 10th grade, I actually saw the kid pull out the gun from his backpack onto some black kids and pull the trigger. This literally happened like two or three tables away from where I was eating. I don't recall if anyone ever died from that shooting, but that was another gang fight incident. Everyone went crazy and started running the second the gunshot went off. Cops were called and school was dismissed point another time during Cinco de Mayo. Some black kids decided to burn down the Mexican flag and that resulted in gang violence for days between the Latinus and black kids. Our school had to be quarantined by cops and security. Was kinda messed up, because at that time there was this really cute black chick that I had a crush on and the gangbangers were literally beating up anyone who socialized with someone of another race. I had two black friends and our group of friends was jumped twice. There was a big divide between races for weeks over that incident. That black chick ended up moving schools. I eventually got in touch with her after high school though. We dated for a couple of weeks, 
but she ended up already having a boyfriend and cheated on him with me. I was not aware of when we started dating, so I broke up with her. Oh damn I went off tangent. Haha. <laughs> I don't remember what grade this was in, but probably 7 to 9. We had chemistry, and were going through something about the alkali metals, and my, low-key crazy Danish, chemistry teacher showed of the reaction between alkali metals and water by first putting a penny-sized piece of I think it was sodium into a tray of water, it boils up, and zips around for a bit before exploding. Then, he get the brilliant idea of hurling the entire piece of sodium he had, which probably had at least the volume of a soft drink can, maybe even a beer can, into the sea by our school. One end of the schoolyard was literally a small beach. The pice ends of getting really close to a couple of swans. So my chemistry teacher almost blew up, and almost certainly pissed off, and angry swans are viscous as hell and quite dangerous. A couple of swans, in front of a class of kids in their early teens. There was also the girl who once hit herself in the head with a ricocheting hammer and fell backwards from the roof of the school's outdoors pizza oven. The same girl also fainted and fell headfirst from a 1 meter stage with a crown of lit candles of her head and almost hit her head on the corner of a table. Then proceeded to hide in the cupboard at the hospital and accidentally jump out and scare the sheet out of a nurse instead of the teacher who had gone with her. And that time a guy in my class grabbed a iron rod that was probably still a few hundred degrees hot with his bare hand in smiting class. Oh, and that time me and a bunch of friends though it would be fun to burn a bunch of pine branches in one of those concrete pipe pieces used to contain stew off you burn and ended up shrouding the nearby kindergarten that was part of the same organization as the school in a layer of smoke. Thicker than a cloud. That was interesting. And the kid who had a habit of beating the crap out of people for no good reason point and that guy who literally pulled down his trousers and showed his ass to half the class and a teacher. He also had a habit of jumping out of the window during math class, so my teacher had to literally wrestle him to the ground and physically pull him back to class O. Oh, and that girl who almost turned the closest thing my class had to popular kids into a creepy cult. A few instances of people chasing each other with shovels to point that time I scared a toddler to tears when playing the villain in a school play by going from monotone businessman to shouting at the top of my lungs in half a breath's time point people talking about partying right in front of the teacher and then asking who snitched. 3 out of 15 students in my class grade of 15 ish people being born the 26th of November and one being born the 27th is another potentially interesting but off topic oddity point did I mention my school had like 70 students total and had grades 1 to 9. I never realized how faked up my school was until now. Last year I was student aid for a chemistry class. This particular day there was a substitute teacher and I had never seen him before. So he is doing attendance, and is extremely quiet so nobody is answering him, because they can't hear him. Halfway through attendance he starts yelling for people to answer him. After attendance he tells everyone to do their work alone and quietly, because it didn't say in the note that they could do work together. People don't listen, and he gets mad, because there is talking, and no work getting done point he decides to pick one student out, and make him the example. He then calls the teacher out for not teaching, and instead yelling at the students. He leaves the room and everything is good point one student then asks if it says anywhere in the note that they couldn't talk to each other. He proceeds to kick her out of the class. I stand up and offend her because tbh she did nothing wrong. He then yells at me telling me I'm not a teacher. I yell back and say that he doesn't know what goes on in this class. He then goes on about how we are high schoolers and should act like it point tries to kick me out of the class and I refuse. He then yells at me some more, I say I'm done with this bullshit and leave. Not before getting in the last laugh by stopping him from closing the door and this pisses him off even more. By the end of the class he had kicked out 8 people out of 22 and was no longer a substitute teacher for that school point. When my teacher got back he joked about it for the rest of the semester. I'm usually a mild person, and rarely gets mad, so he says who would have thought you would start the revolution. In high school, we had app US history, app us for short, our junior year and app government our senior year. Pretty much everyone who did Apush went on to do AppGov the next year the teachers for Apush and AppGov were friends, and liked to mess with each other. 
Since they taught in adjacent rooms, and their whiteboards were on the same shared wall, they liked to randomly bang on the whiteboard, or write really aggressively, to mess with the other teacher. Both of them were super fun and we, the students, loved it. Point I specifically remember an incident that occurred my senior year, during App Governor. The teacher had to step out for a few minutes, don't remember why, and gave us a big reading assignment to work on while he was gone. We were all reading and studying when the app hush teacher pops his head through the door, asks us if the app gov teacher is in, we tell him he stepped out for a few minimum. It was clear the app hush teacher had something he wanted to discuss with the app gov teacher, but as he saw the teacher was gone, you could literally see the gleam in his eyes he got an idea, so the app hush teacher just strolls on in, most of us don't care, we had him the year before, and walks over to the teacher's desk and drops off an envelope. Then before he leaves, he turns around and plucks the phone off the wall, snags the computer monitor, and stuffs a few other random objects from the desk and just casually walks out with all that stuff. Gives us the old finger to the lips on his way out, and that was that. Lots of giggling from us as we fought to get our sheet together before the app gov teacher got back. Point eventually the app gov teacher gets back, and we are all playing it cool. We inform him that the app ush teacher left a note for him on the desk. Turns out the note said call me or something like that. So the teacher turns around to grab the phone and nothing. It's not there. And we lose our sheet. We were laughing so hard. He smacks the shed wall a few times and you can hear the appush teacher cracking up on the other side. He didn't even notice the computer monitor until the appush teacher brought it back in tears from laughing. This was grade 8 or 9, if I can remember correctly, my high school was connected with my elementary, so I often confuse what happened during what years. Anyways, we were going to our school library which fortunately was right next to our classroom. As we got ready to leave and take our laptops, books, etc. to the library, we noticed there was some mud on the floor. This new kid I hadn't seen before, good old Duncan, had sheet his pants and the sheet somehow made it out of his underwear, assuming he was even wearing any, and got all over the damn floor. Now, I somehow was the only guy to fully realize it, because it once melt bad into the classroom was very far from any entrance, where mud could be tracked in from. There were little piles of sheet that were left like breadcrumbs to the library, and I was honestly so confused, and alone in my thought. So I talked to one of my friends who realized the same thing, after I explained what had happened. It all kind of spread which I don't feel guilty for, considering this man had literally sheet of his own volition I know this how. He continued to do it throughout the rest of the year I had classes with him. I don't believe he had problems with holding in his sheet, because he was just a very naturally lazy guy. Duncan never did his work, he just stared at the board in class until the bell rang. I even tried to help the poor guy out with his work, but he was uninterested. I haven't talked or seen Duncan in 10 years, I like to theorize he became some badass underground mafia boss or something point there was also this one time in grade 12. This one is kind of weird as well, I didn't say anything out of pity. This guy who I won't name, was friends with a lot of the nerdy kids, and he would bring a Swiss to school to be cool and everyone kind of knew, and didn't really care since he was this small guy who seemed pretty innocent. One day, in our sheety religion class, our teacher was being an all about how we needed a specific type of colored pen to write our notes properly. The guy who carried around his Swiss rummages through his school bag and accidentally drops it, spilling the contents all over the ground. Holy hell, what was in this kid's bag four different knives fall out of his bag ranging from very small to an actual kitchen knife, including his Swiss. Along with pictures of large breasted anim girls plus four. He grabbed his pen that fell out with the rest of his collection casually and then realized what he had done to himself. The guy ran out of the classroom after stuffing his bag with all of his stuff. Never saw him again. Assumed he transferred schools or moved. That was a pure well that happened moment. Had applang my junior year of high school and knew at least 12 others who were taking multiple app classes at the time and were getting super stressed at the end of each trimester a girl took up an art class as an elective to give her some outlet for her stress. She was an amazing artist though and she always got really passionate about her personal projects. Except the teacher was super controlling over everything they did. You basically cannot be creative and have to do everything her way to the faking t well girl got a C. 
because she decided to add a tiny twist to her project and change the teacher's idea in a minuscule way. I asked how it went, and she just set the show Barks project on the desk and smashed it with a textbook with a loud slam that got everyone's attention, and calmly said fuck must be. We had a weeb club, and I was part of the club's cabinet as a secretary. Club meets held every Wednesday in the science building. Well one week, some kids wanted to heat up their lunch and our teacher advisor for the club said go for it, and let them into the back office. Not one minute later, big explosion and a bright flash, room was dark, because we were going to show the first episode of Guilty Crown, and it silenced the entire room. We don't know what happened exactly but this was the week all the app bio and physiology kids were dissecting a shark, cat, or pig. And opening that door eked of dissective fluids and sheet I can barely identify. The meeting ended two minutes before it could start point pair we were running new routes as a warm up exercise and part of this route goes through the parking lot. Can't get through unless the gate is open, but on this day, it was closed due to students leaving campus for lunch. Teacher was too far for us to get him, so we just jumped the fence. Eventually we did get him because one kid actually got his shorts caught at the top of the fence and dangled there. No one laughed until he was escorted to the nurse's office. We were doing a project which involved teaching children about archaeology. I'm an archaeology student. One girl in our class always was a bit weird. I believe she had some personal issues or something, but not quite sure. We were divided into groups of three, and she was in the same group as me, whatever. Teacher explains what we need to focus on etc. while we prepared our things. During the lesson with the children she was mean to all the kids, while they were supposed to work on something. We tried to reason with her, but she just continued. So we report this to the teacher, who decided to switch her with someone from the other groups, so he could keep an eye on her. At this point I'm not quite sure what happened, but we talk to the guy that switched with her, and tell him what she's been doing. While I do this, we hear some shouting coming from the hallway, and through the glass we can see the girl walking away in anger during the break our teacher talked with us to ask us how everything was going, what we did, and didn't expect etc. He quickly mentioned that the girl was a bit confused, but refused to comment further on it. Exactly then, the girl walks into the classroom we were sitting, and walks up to our teacher, and gives him the mightiest beach slap I have even seen, right across his face, and tries to walk away again. The teacher grabbed her, before she could get away and eventually she got suspended for the rest of the year, and had to redo all the classes of the current year so yay, that happened. In high school there was this awesome app US history teacher, loved by nearly everyone who had the opportunity to be in his class. He started to have serious issues with his spine during my time in his class. Halfway through the semester, he had to use a rolling walking supporter and needed to call in long term subs. He essentially became house MD of app hush point we were in the middle of class with a sub when there was a knock at the door. Sub was a former student of this teacher. The sub opened the door and stopped dead in his tracks. There was Apush house with a dead stare into the sub's eyes. The teacher took a slow step forward with it a word. The sub took a slow step back. This went on until he was backed against the whiteboard point our teacher gestured to the door with his head. Get out the sub looked at the rest of us and walked out, closing the door quietly. Everyone was still in shock. This man had emailed us saying he wouldn't be in this week. He looked at the board for a moment, before picking up the lesson like everything was normal. He didn't answer any questions not pertaining to the lecture point I would end it here, but this guy didn't do that just in app hush point in my computer science class. Our teacher left for 10 minutes 30 seconds after she left, app hush house rolled in. No one said anything, what do you say to a legend? He proceeded to tell us about Winston Churchill and the crap that man did to the South Asian peoples during occupation and he just left. Seconds before our CSE teacher came back, we told her Apush House had just been there. She looked shocked and ran outside, most of the other teachers loved him too, quickly finding him, and they both walked back into the computer lab deep in conversation. Last one, the economics class I took, was in the former classroom of Apush House. Our reckon teacher did both Apush and economy, so he and Apush House worked together sometimes. One day, class was about to start, and Apush House walked in, nodding to students who greeted him, and he took the Ekin teacher's seat at the main desk and started class. 
A minute after class starts the Ekin teacher rushes in and says I knew it. House. Hey, man. What are you doing in my class? In that moment we thought the painkillers had just kicked in. Ekin just looked at him. Apush the class tar give up his seat and Ekin sat in it, to the side of his own desk. The lessons proceeded as normal, with Ekin taking a backseat as house led point just know that Apush house did this to every class in the high school. No class was spared his antics. So, this was in maths class, I'm in high school. TLDR at end point basically, we missed our first class, because they did this huge 50 minute thing where they were talking about God, Jesus and religious stuff, and while doing that, they gave out bibles to every S1, 9th grade. The bibles were about as large as the palm of my hand, I'm 12, and weren't hardback. This meant they were more flexible, and could easily fit in our blazer pockets. Okay, onto the mini story point we had a cover teacher who was an old man, but he was strict. He was a nice man though. Everyone was constantly talking when the teacher was, and it was pissing him off. A lot of people had their bibles out, playing around with them, and quoting random things from random pages. So, the teacher eventually shouted shut up for just 5 minutes. This set the entire class off. They started laughing, and everyone had just gotten louder. The teacher shouted goddammit, wanna. Know what one of the students did? They picked up their bible and you yeeted it at the teacher. At the same time, she screamed Christ compels you. It hit him on the forehead and he looked absolutely dumbfounded. That student was suspended and the cover teacher returned to our class as cover after bringing the student to the head teacher. Needless to say, he was embarrassed, but we haven't stopped talking about it since point TLDR. A student threw a small bible at a teacher in front of everyone, while screaming Christ compels you, hitting him on the forehead. Before I go any further, I should say our entire year was a troublemaking group at our high school. The principal and our dean openly told us we were the worst year group they had in 30 years. Anyway, my form teacher at school was also my math teacher and also my good friend's mum or mom for you US folk. We used to always play this game to see who could stay standing the longest. From there it would move on to the bonus game and just general sheet chat to distract the class. Yes I know terrible students. But we all did pretty well out of school. One day she completely flipped her lid, jumped up on the desk, and started shouting at us all how math was going to take over the world. Everyone went completely silent while she ranted on and on and on. It was actually quite scary seeing someone have a breakdown in front of us. Someone eventually ran off to tell the dean, and our principal had to come and take her from the room. She was still ranting while this happened, speaking to my mate a little, while down the track she ended up spending 3 months with a psychiatrist and 6 months off work. They put it down to workplace stress. Yes I know, and yes I still feel guilty for encouraging some of our behavior. There is a silver lining, she's now the head of department at a prestigious private school. I'd like to say all the people in my year group have matured, but doing well for themselves and growing up are two completely different things. I was in my natural science class, 9th grade, and we had a free day, since a substitute had nothing for us to do. I had started this fad at the school, where we brought cards to class, specifically for card tricks. Some friends got some gaff cards for specific tricks. Fun stuff point this one kid who looked like he was 6 to 8 years old was in our class, and he walks over to me and asks if he can see my cards. This guy was the same age as all of us. He just looked incredibly young. So I say of course, and hand them to him, and he's playing around with them, and it's about 10 minutes before we leave, so I ask if I could have them back, since I was gonna prepare the deck for a trick for later before class ended. He starts freaking out saying, no, I want them, you gave them to me. And I was trying to keep calm and said, well I mean, I was letting you borrow them for the class. I need them bae he suddenly stands up, screams on the top of his lungs, starts crying, bursts out of the classroom, and we hear him screaming for his day life down the hallway. Every teacher opening their doors and popping out to see what had just happened. I felt awful I just did this to this kid. What was even worse was literally the next day, we got word that he got struck and killed by the school bus that morning. He was hit so hard, his shoes flung off his feet. 
they left them where they fell at. When they took press photos, I faking still feel like a total faking sheet back 5 years later. The least I could had done was let him have the cards. 3 pounds this is both a well that happened and an r slash thathapand kind of tale, but I swear it's true, I have the diary from 2013 back home to prove it. I might have told this story before, don't remember, but never in detail point during my sophomore year, the school district redid their curriculum to introduce common core this resulted in some one keenness with the advanced class levels, and although I was on the app track, I was put in regular level grade 10 English classes alongside a random assortment of everyone else in the year. My two best friends in the world were in this class with me, and so was one of the dominant class clowns, calling him pounds, and a solid chunk of his posse point I was sort of a reclusive weirdo in HS, one of those people everyone knows but nobody knows, if that makes sense, and I was infamous for being willful and kind of crazy, because undiagnosed slash unmedicated ADHD will do that to ya. Yeah. I mostly kept to myself, but I had a reputation for one, being an overachiever, and two, constantly doing strange and random stuff in class. Pounds on the other hand had a rep of his own he was a juvenile delinquent who both looked and acted like a 5 feet 0 inches gremlin version of Logan Paul before Logan Paul was a thing. He was loud and popular, and he thought I was a fun target, because I had sheety impulse control, and tended to freak out when I got upset. He'd pulled tricks on me before, and I was sick of his sheet this English class was no exception point I spent most of the first semester ignoring his dumbass attempts to fack with me after a while people in the early classes started leaving LB's assigned seat chair less the classroom had more desks than chairs, and he sat at the end of one row near the window, so people would take his chair in previous classes. At some point, he got it into his head that I was responsible for moving the chair, but he couldn't prove it. I ignored this because I was more interested in drawing FMA ox with my friends on the other side of the room, that is, until the fateful day in October, when our story begins there was something happening outside, I think a helicopter went over, and I was standing by the window, where LB's chairless desk was, when he entered he immediately saw this, and assumed that I moved the chair, and he lost his sheet. He ran over and started yelling at me with his little gaggle of jock friends, and he said this one thing in particular that just got me. I like he called me a faking hoe, and I couldn't control myself. I started laughing my ass off like I was one of the school weirdos I'd never dated in my life. I'd never even held hands with a boy, and LB's clique had tried pretending to ask me out before, and I'd responded by smacking them in the nuts with my lunchbox. In my defense I did not understand that this hurts boys way more than girls back then. Of all the thousands of cuss words I was certain he had in his repertoire, he chose that one. Really? The one that didn't even apply? It was too damn funny, I was laughing so hard a tear came to my eye, and of course this made Pounds get even madder he was in the process of cussing me out when the teacher came in and was horrified by his language. She asked me why I was laughing. I answered honestly, and he was promptly punted to the principal's office, before he could finish a sentence point, that is not the end, that is act 1, because as soon as Pounds was removed from the room, his friends took over the role like I said, he was popular, and people liked him a lot more than they liked me, I got blamed for causing the fight, because I stole LB's chair, and the classroom rioted. They decided I should be sent to the office in LB's stead, because clearly I was the one in the wrong here the teacher took my side, but bless her heart, she couldn't control a classroom to save her life, she was soft spoken and gentle and most students walked all over her she could not get the room to calm down. LB's pals worked the room into a frenzy, at one point they started chanting free pounds and sent blow enfi so loudly that the classrooms next door could hear. One of them had a sharpie they all passed it around in order to start writing these messages on their arms and on their clothing. I was told a Twitter hashtag started, though that's the one part of this tale that might be hyperbole because I didn't have Twitter at the time to check. I did not stop laughing once. I laughed so hard my face hurt point literally it took an hour long riot and the actual principal coming down to the room before order was restored. 
People all over the school heard. I saw three pounds written on arms for the rest of the day, and then it all just disappeared that's the weirdest part to me. I was kind of self-centered back then, but I genuinely thought this disaster was worthy of an urban legend people sharpied it on their clothing, and instead it was literally never mentioned again after that day, except once or twice, in passing by people who asked me if I really moved the chair. I did not really move the chair. I would have, if it had still been there, because his reactions were getting to be really funny, but in real life I did not do it point my mom was so proud of me, when I told her that afternoon, she was all oh you're so brave standing up to harassment like that, but I thought she was faking with me, because I genuinely didn't think it was bullying. I thought it was just a hilarious thing that happened, because Pounds and his friends were collectively as smart as a cartoon dodo. This level of social awareness was why they found it so funny to screw with me. Two years later he was expelled from school for robbing a convenience store with a butter knife and stabbing someone apparently he went on to graduate as valedictorian from juvie school he's inspired several characters in my fiction writing Mayo. So in my senior year of high school, one of the assignments in my college English class was to write an instructional essay. The teacher told us we were to get into groups because our topic or topics for the essay would be how to cook a meal. We were given the choice of what to make, so my group chose a breakfast platter. We were gonna make bacon, eggs, toast, the whole shebang. Then came the day we had to cook the stuff point. When I thought breakfast platter, I figured that my group would bring in a carton of eggs, a loaf of bread, a jar of peanut butter, I brought the bacon, and, well, you know, just enough food to call it a platter four pieces of bread, two of which were end pieces, a jar of PB about 15% full point one egg point suffice to say. It didn't go well. The well that happened moment came around when one of our group members, we'll call him Fred but, tried to cook the bacon, though. I got microwave bacon, because I'm a guy who doesn't know how to cook, and I figured that'd be fine. Apparently, neither did Fred but, microwave bacon is supposed to go in for 30 seconds, and I thought this was common knowledge. Evidently it wasn't, because he put the bacon in 40 HREE. M-I-N-U-T-E-S this was on a cheap plastic plate too, so once we took the bacon out, the plate bubbling. The bacon was black, and we had a bubbling plate point mercifully, we were only being graded on the essay, so I still got an A on that paper TLDR. One of my friends put bacon in the microwave so long that the plate started to bubble. A girl didn't pass year and ended up in my class. She missed most of the classes and barely passed the I first semester. Once she came to school after almost a month of absence. It was a winter, and she was wearing a dirty dress with dark stains, tights torn so much I actually wondered how they stayed on. Her hair was all over the place, and she had smudge macup. She came to the second on the third period, 15 minutes late. Classes last 45 minutes, looking almost dead. She mumbled to a teacher why she was late and sat down on the closest available seat. She fell asleep in seconds and didn't wake up for the end of the next class when we had to move to another room. She stayed for the pe class and hid in the changing room all period. Then she went to language class. She sat down in random seat and spaced out, not even responding to the teacher's calls. After about 10 minutes she suddenly stood up and told the teacher she wanted to rewrite one of her tests. The teacher agreed, cause she was rarely in school, and was had a lot to catch up. She sat down in the seat on the front of the class, and stared at the sheet of paper, not even writing down her name or the question she was supposed to answer. This continued for about 5 minutes. Then she just stood up without a word, rolled the piece of paper in a ball, threw it at the teacher and mumbled something. She started to walk around classroom quickly, until she finally found her seat. She walked past it few times. Took her stuff, tripped down on a chair, stood up and kicked the desk near. She then started yelling some nonsense that didn't make any sense and left the room. Nobody knew what she was on about and honestly no one was really interested. A different girl from my class messaged her a month after this accident cause she hasn't been in school ever since. She told her that she's not coming back ever and she didn't. I will be graduating in a month and I haven't seen her for a few months. I don't think she will be there on the graduation day too. And I'm not mad about, I never really liked her. 
In my first year of engineering we had a module called thermofluids, thermodynamics plus fluid dynamics, because why not combine two complicated things together. This was about the only module which was compulsory for every division of engineering so as a result had about 500 students with maybe 300 turning up to lectures the lecturer for this module was the most boring, plain, monotonous individual you have ever met, every lecture was a snoozer fest. Genuinely the only lectures I've been in at university so far where the number of people I've seen asleep in the lecture were to high to count. The only reason people turned up for lectures was because he would write things down on the whiteboard, so they would not be in the slides anyway one day in a lecture he must have been wearing a shirt with slightly shorter sleeves or something, because what people started to notice was that there was the end of a tattoo poking out of one of the sleeves. Word got round the lecture room quickly, and within minutes there was a maximum doubt WhatsApp chat with everyone hypothesizing what it could be, and how to find out. Everyone was made admin, so they could add others, if you're wondering how it got to 256 so quickly. The problem with this was lots of people had their phones on vibrate, and left them on the desk without thinking so for a couple of minutes there was this collective oh sheet moment throughout the room, where there were continuous vibrations going off. Somehow despite the obvious interruptions the lecturer was seemingly oblivious that it was actually about him so moved on once it stopped, and the chat continued for the whole lecture with people switching their phones to silent point after the lecture he stopped us, before we all got up to leave, and asked if he had done anything differently, because people seemed to be less asleep, and paying way more attention to him than normal. No one had the balls to actually answer with the reason, so we all just left and broke out laughing once we were outside the building, hoping that he hadn't asked, because why we were paying attention point not the most interesting of events I suppose, but hope it was worth the red. The time our geography teacher accidentally showed us born point it was 8th grade, and every geography class started off with a few minutes of discussing whatever the current events of the world was. At the time, Obama had just gotten a dog and that was the subject of the discussion. Everyone wanted to see what the president's dog, named Bo, looked like point she cuts on the projector and opens up Google on the computer. I had been reading and barely paying attention, but when I glanced up and saw Bo the White House dog typed into the search bar, something just felt off and I started paying attention. She hits search and immediately clicks the first link without looking. The page loads just slowly enough that me, and I'm sure others, register that the top bars of the page are not at all what a news site would look like. Then the image pops into existence. I will never forget that image. Against a mountainous background, upon a large smooth boulder, a muscly tattooed man was balls deep in the ass of a woman, who had to be at least 8.5 months pregnant. All hell broke loose point there were multiple screams, with the teachers being the loudest, she jumps in front of the image and yells far louder than I ever heard her yell, before for everyone to close their eyes and put their head on their desk. I assume that everyone did, because it was immediate dead silence. A few seconds later we hear the projector turn off, and she is walking out of the room saying I have to tell, principal name, what happened, we all raise our heads as she walks out, and we just sit there in silence looking around. No one says anything, no one knows what to say. It remains completely silent until another teacher walks in 5 minutes later, and also says, if you have anything you need to work on, get it done. And that was the last thing said for the rest of the class. Apparently the teacher was so shaky, and worked up over what she had done she had to be sent home for the rest of the week. One day when I was in high school, while packing my lunch, before leaving for school I decided I wanted to take some soda to school. So I took my water bottle with the push button and the pop up straw, and filled it with soda. While it was sitting on the counter it started spewing soda out of the straw, while it was open. So I realized, when I drink out of it, I shouldn't push the button to open the straw, or I'll spill the soda everywhere. Instead I should just take the lid off, and drink straight out of the water bottle point it was 5th period. The teacher was teaching. I hadn't drank out of it all day. I went to reach for my water bottle, while telling myself not to push that button, but out of habit I'd push that button. The straw popped up and all of a sudden there was a geyser of soda going all the way from my desk to the ceiling, and I was frantically trying to close the straw back up. But the pressure had built up so much that, while I was trying to close the straw it caused it to go everywhere the straw pointed. 
When I finally got it closed I looked up and nobody knew what to do. It was the funniest thing I've ever had happen to me. When I went to leave the classroom to get paper towels the entire door was soaked in soda and there was a large puddle of soda under the door. The ceiling had a large line of soda going across it and in the spot right above the bottle on the ceiling was soaked. It got on everybody around me and I somehow managed to not get a drop of soda on me. At the end of the year there was still dried soda on the ceiling and every time I would go to open a bottle the teacher would look frantically at what I was opening as if waiting for another geyser of soda to emerge. Whenever I would open soda after that and hear the fizz for a good while it would always startle me and cause me to briefly panic thinking it was going to go everywhere again. In 10th grade, my English teacher Mr. D was, objectively, a prick. Off the top of my head, here are a few things that stuck out about my experience in his class. He locked me and a few other kids out of the classroom once because we didn't remember some vocabulary words. He had a website for the class that was filled with pictures of Obama photoshopped as Big Brother in 1984. He went on a half hour tirade comparing Obama to Hitler once. He made us all read one of his essays from college and then write an essay about how good his essay was. These are just the outstanding incidents, I'm not including the everyday things like holding us way after the bell rang, or the regular homophobic comments, or the overt AYN rand worship. I'm telling you all this to let you know how insufferable the guy was, and to give you context for the following. A kid named Garrett hated Mr. D this rivalry built over the course of the year and went from ideological arguments to Garrett straight up yelling at Mr. D and writing about how stupid Mr. D's viewpoints were in written assignments. We dealt with a lot of sheet from Mr. D, so it was cathartic to watch. Then came the day of our final exam. Mr. D, who was obsessed with being unique and individual, thought that he was the reincarnation of Robin Williams' character in Dead Poets Society and would frequently quote the movie. After we had all turned our exams in, Garrett stood up on his desk and started tearing Mr. D to pieces. He yelled about all his frustrations that had built up throughout the year, every unfair grade and useless assignment, all the stuff Mr. D had said that bothered him, like the Obama slash Hitler thing, and bragging about how he'd had his first child at 19. I really regret that I don't remember the details of his speech, because it was better written and more passionately performed than anything else I heard at that school. Garrett and Mr. D were both taken to the guidance counselor's office, and since Mr. D allowed him to make the speech and didn't stop him, both of them were given equal blame and Garrett basically got off scot-free. The incident is still fondly spoken of at the school, and when a student stands up to a teacher, it's referred to as pulling a Garrett. In college we had a business law class with a professor who was pretty hardcore about test security. During the first of two finals a kid comes in and ride a tricycle down the aisle of this massive sloping theater like auditorium, jumps up on stage and rides around in a few circles then rides out the back door behind the stage. Everyone has a great laugh and takes the test point I find all this out later as I'm in the second final. We end up sitting in there for like 30 minutes waiting for the prof to show up. He and about 6 teaching assistants stroll in 30 minutes late and start handing out exams. The prof apologizes for being late says he had an incident in the first final and he had to remake the exams for test security purposes turns out when they took up the exams after final hash one there was one copy missing and a student who signed him for the exam was also missing. The guy with the tricycle was a distraction that allowed the other guy to slip out with a copy of the exam. The professor printed off 300 extra copies then after our exam called the police and had them meet him at this student's house. Point C. He is a business law professor. He also happens to be a lawyer who copyrights his exams and is on good terms with the local PD. Showed up at the kid's house told him he was being expelled already for cheating but that if he didn't produce the exam he was planning on pressing charges for theft and illegal distribution of copyrighted materials. Kid gave back the exam, and as far as I know got expelled, though he may have just been thrown out of the business school. A for creativity, F for execution, come on you freaking signed your name, when you checked in, provided an ID and everything. 
Stupid point prof was pretty funny nevertheless, we learned pretty quick not to leave our phones behind, because he loved answering the lost phones in the middle of class in front of 300 students, and messing with the owners looking for their phone. My friend was bored in college, and started walking to my next class with me. I should have known, considering his personality, but whoops he strolled straight into my classroom, and without hesitating, introduced himself as the sub. It was a small honors seminar, only about 15 students total, and we were working on a literature workshop. He went to the board and started writing down and explaining the main archetypes used in the homework we'd just read, all complete BS. He didn't know what we'd been reading at all. I was very quiet in the course and froze completely, just silently took my seat with my heartbeat pounding in my ears anyway. He goes on like this for about 5 minutes with students taking notes and thinking they're struggling to keep up, rather than realizing he's full of crap. Then my prof walks in. He and my friend make eye contact and the room is silent. Then my friend did an elaborate scream, picture the old to me, overacting damsel in distress about to be taken by a vampire or something, and runs from the room. My prof, an old, elitist, arrogant New Yorker, is so confused that he decides to pretend it's some sort of hallucination or something, and goes on as if literally nothing has happened. He sits down at the front of the room in the chair my friend just vacated, opens his books, and starts class first thing out of his mouth, was the first point my friend had written on the chalkboard. It was too much. The confused tension in the room finally broke as students laughed so hard they cried. My professor turned purple, he was so mad, and I tried to pull my best poker face through the rest of class. Another student asked if I knew the sub after, since I'd been talking to him, when I walked in, and I had to play, like he was some stranger who'd followed me in off the street, to save my final grade point needless to say I never let him walk me to class again. Not the most eventful, but it was definitely a moment, where I went yup, that just happened TLDR at bottom sorry for bad formatting on mobile small background, I was in a public middle school in America, and we had to wear uniforms, to tell what grade we were in, important later, I have no clue, why they did that but a, I was in my last year, so I was wearing the blue uniform, first years wear white, second red, upper year blue, the place I was wasn't the best area, more of a Jito area. Like there were bullet holes in the school's bulletproof glass kinda bad. So I was in Spanish class with my good friend, that well call Anne for privacy. She was my only other friend at the time, so we were close. A transformer blows, or something, and the power to the school goes out completely. Now it was a stormy day, so it was real dark and there were not much windows. Me and Anne are confused along with all the other kids. But we go back to our lesson. Not even a second later second years and upper years start darting down the halls, like they are running for their lives. I forget which year the kid was in, but this boy body slams into the glass next to our door. He does this again then darts away with the rest of the kids. Me and Dan look at each other and I sigh. God, I feel real bad for the teachers. Can't even control this and nods this kinda stuff was pretty common but nothing to this extent has ever happened before. Another kid, last year student, slams the door open, runs in, flips a desk, the runs out. After that the fire alarm goes off. We all run out of the school cause we're all kinda scared now. Turns out what happened when the power went out. A kid took something slammed it repeatedly and screamed something along the lines of oh my god there's gunshots he kids understandably get scared and run out. I literally turn to Anne and say fuck. That literally just happened the kid did get in mad trouble for what he did TLDR. Power in school goes out. Kid faked shooting. Students get scared and run. Out of college for a couple years now. But this classroom memory is ingrained in my brain forever took a short story writing class around my sophomore year. There was one dude in the class. Who was a military veteran. And who had clearly seen some sheet. Seemed like a super nice guy, though, always trying his best to give people feedback on their work even though writing wasn't exactly in his comfort zone. On the very last class of the semester, it was his turn to have his work reviewed. He brings in this super descriptive story about two dudes rapping women they took home from a bar. The story ends with the classic it was all a dream scenario, but everything leading up to that was incredibly uncomfortable and graphic. 
When it came time to give feedback, the entire class was hedging around the obvious elephant in the room, trying to be super generic about what they said, or just not speaking up at all. Then one girl, my friend, raises her hand. She starts off by taking a deep breath and saying, guess I'm going to be the brave one here. Her voice shook so hard, but she continues and goes on to say, this isn't funny, and starts to tell the story of when someone close to her was wrapped as a little girl point she couldn't finish her story. She just broke down crying. The army veteran who had written the rap story sat in silence for a minute, and then he just exploded at her. He started to say something like, if you knew the sheet I've seen, and then leapt up from his desk, threw a trash can at the wall, and stormed out point when the stunned silence broke, the professor and another student veteran chased after the guy, while the rest of us comforted the girl, who was, of course, bawling. Afterwards, my roommate and I went back to our apartment, and also started bawling, because we were honestly in shock point still barely believe that was a real thing that happened. I'm gonna apologize in advance for the use of the word retard. I just don't wanna type out special needs kid every time point in my personal finance class there were like 4 retarded kids and 2 of the retard teachers, as well as the teacher of the class. One day 2 of the retards got into an argument, a boy and a girl, both freshmen. Nobody knows how it started, but it ended when the guy called the girl a stupid cunt with no tigs, and she proceeded to kick him in the dick full force. They got into a fist fight, except neither of them were good at it point eventually one of the retard teachers, who we think is a bodybuilder, steps in, grabs both of them by the shoulder, and pushes them against the wall. He wasn't being overly violent or anything, he just needed to keep them apart. He says something, like I'm gonna let you go, if you stop fighting, and both the kids agreed. The girl just decides to walk out of the room, and then leave the building entirely. We thought it was over until the boy tried to chase after her. The same teacher that split them up Jut stood in the doorway and kept him from leaving. The kid then started punching the teacher and at that point the vice principal walked in, who's also a very muscular person, and intervened. At this point the rest of us weren't trying to act normal, we were enjoying it and most of us recorded it and the teachers didn't care. The vice principal then basically grabs the kid and drags him out of the room. As they exit the room, the kid punches the wall, and the other retard teacher just says how'd that feel, dumbass. After it was all over, the regular teacher, who had been presenting something, just told everybody to work quietly on our own, because she was gonna be called to the office soon, to explain what she had seen. She was right. Both the retards got suspended, the girl for one week and the boy for two. Senior year physics, already had all my science credits, so I wanted out of the class. School admin wouldn't let me drop, so I figured I'd get myself kicked out. Started off innocent, texting, listening to my headphones, not really doing anything class related. Ended up with 2 in class referrals, I was 17 I could care less. Was told if I got one more I'd be out of class for the year, I was fully threatened slash motivated. Figured if I'm gonna go out it may as well be a banger. Talk to my buddy before class and we decide to play the bonus game. Fun fact, our teacher was at least 75, never told us her age, but she had already retired 15 years before she came back, so we just did math plus how she looked. So we end up getting to full class audible levels way earlier than we intended. We both look at each other, like it escalated far too quickly, he gives me a look, like he's got it in the bag, and he straight barks out the phallic word. Still no response from the living dinosaur. I hit one back, no response. We had a teacher from the class next door come in, and ask what the commotion is. Dinosaur says everything is fine, and the dude in his 30s looked at her, like he wanted to tell her what's up, nah he was a bro. My buddy is hesitant to one up me at that point, waits 5 minutes or so then finally belts out the largest penis that he could. Dinosaur moves 3x faster than any reasonable mind could imagine, and makes it to him in 0.5 seconds flat. Brian, what did you just say? He is trying to come up with some stupid answer about Tourette syndrome. Well gauntlet has been dropped. I'll let out the deepest, heartiest, and most decisiveness that I could muster. Dinosaur didn't move turned to look at me and told me to GTFO, public HS so super unprofessional on her part. Got sent to the principal, 
first person in her tenure to be expelled from a class, got to go to the class that I initially wanted. It was the period prior to mine, but our teacher told us about it, because I guess she just wanted to talk about it point so this is a high school geometry class, the teacher is pretty chill, and the class isn't too hard or anything, and she lets you use your phone and stuff. This being said, she has two strict rules, no cussing, and no wearing a hat indoors. Other than that, super chill one day, a kid comes into class with something to prove. I could spend plenty of time describing what kind of person he is, but I think it's enough to say he was wearing an F hat. He sits down and class starts. Teacher starts lecturing when she notices the hat and calmly asks him to take it off. Nothing unusual, people often forgot to take their hat off before her class, so this would happen a lot. Except this time, the kid says no. She repeats that he needs to take the hat off. No. This exchange repeated a couple more times, but with more zest from both parties. Kid is being aggressive and thinks he's super cool, but teacher is now mildly irritated point he won't take off the hat, so she quietly walk over to his desk, takes the hat off his head, walks back to her desk and leaves it there, and then turns to the board to continue lecturing. All this is completely within her rights as a teacher, mind you. Well kid wasn't gonna have it. He gets up, just as she's resuming lecturing, runs to the front of the class, puts his hat back on. He then grabs a stack of homework papers from her desk, pulls out a lighter, and lights them up. He then drops the burning papers all over the floor, and then runs out the front door. Right outside the door is the front fence to campus, which he quickly scales, and just runs off. The teacher was a bit shaken up the rest of the day, but seemed more or less alright. Apparently she finished the lecture. A handful of us holes in a large lecture hall disrupted class often, and the professors was this old lady anthropologist who clearly had no idea how to handle such immature behavior in a college classroom. One day she gave up trying to teach over these dicks non-stop talking in the lecture hall, and asked to either stop, or go in the hall to talk. Point one, you told her to shut the fuck up, and she just gaped at him, clearly dumbfounded, then took a long pause, and tried to return to teaching. The assholes started laughing and cursing more, why the hell were they in this class, and finally some massive dude at the front of the room stood up and said if they didn't shut the fuck up he was going to come up there and shut them up because he was trying to learn some faking cultural anthropology. Everyone in the hall was silent, but I saw many people nodding like, yeah, you tell them, they started laughing at him and he started walking up hall coming right at them, and he looked like he meant business. They died down by the time he reached their row and came down at loom over them all sitting together. He asked if they had anything else to say, and when they were quiet he yelled it at them, and finally they were all muttering no, then. He went and sat back in his seat and the professor just stared for a few minutes at the whole situation then went back to teaching. They didn't disrupt class again, I think a few of them didn't come back. During 11th grade on day day during a half day I went into English class and sat down like I normally did. When class starts the teacher is in a bad mood and puts up yesterday's vocab test on the overhead and tells us to do it. She is being incredibly beachy and downright rude. When she was switching sheets and someone said they weren't finished finished she responded with you guys are on as students you don't need any more time in a very beachy tone. When a student raised their hand she responded in such a snotty way too. Everyone was really confused, but just kept quiet and continued to redo the test. I was thinking we all maybe did really bad on the vocab test. Then our honors English teacher from last year comes into the room and our teacher says oh my god look at these test results. Do you see them? These are honors students here and this is how they did on their test. Our previous teacher was smiling and said something back. And as she was leaving the room she was still smiling and was making shadow puppets with the overhead. We were now even more confused. Since it was a half day class ended and she told us to just get out. My friend had the class next and I told him what happened. When we got home my friend said nothing like that happened during his class the next day comes and I come into class right after the lunch bell and sit down. Another girl walks in, and when the teacher asks how she is doing the girl responds with I'm a little scared after what happened yesterday, and our teacher responded with don't be, you have nothing to worry about. Another student came in, 
and asked the teacher if she wanted some chocolate as this teacher used chocolate and said she would always be happy to receive free chocolate from us. The teacher declined and said thank you, but surprisingly today I'm good and don't need any chocolate. At that point I knew she was going to drop something negative on us when class started. So everyone else comes into class and the bell rings and we are just sitting there waiting to see what yesterday was about. Our teacher begins class with telling us that we all did great on our most recent vocab test, like really great, better than she thought we did. She was amazed at how well we did as the class as a whole scored higher than what was expected out of the curriculum. She then tells us that because of this, she will have to up the amount of work we receive by a little, because as honor students we need to be challenged, the increase in work was not even noticeable, and we should all be proud of ourselves to this day I say there had to be more to it, maybe she was pissed we created more work for her, because what kind of teacher treats students like that for doing amazing work. As a student in Florida there is not an end to the school stories I can tell. Sorry none of these were in a classroom, but they happened in school, and upon hearing slash seeing the incident none of the students went berserk, but rather were not surprised this happened. First one, in a regular school day we had received the news that a student was stabbed by scissors by another angry student. When I heard this I wasn't phased at all. I laughed when I found out the kids were not in a fatal state but just hurt. Second one, a fight broke out in the middle of the cafeteria in the matter of mere seconds the best part about this was the fact that Zxxtentations look at me was playing which is a perfect fight song emo. Due to good behavior they played music over lunch, which is ironic, because a fight happened, a teacher got hit in the process and after that they cut off the music and told up to dump our trays. Third one, a girl I knew stole a car and went for a joyride causing damage to streets the Florida man slash woman thing is no joke we were not told it was her, but the girl who did it never came back to school, and the blurred photos of the car thief showed a skinny black girl, so we knew it was here fourth one, a kid I knew, was arrested on felony charges for saying he was gonna shoot up the school. This kid was also really faking weird he said he supported the stoning of homosexuals and other shit he was smart and sorta of cool I guess, but he faked up his life doing that. One of my friends was in said GC that the kid made the threat in point all of these happened at Pines Middle School and all can be found online except number 2 cause it wasn't a big deal never a dull day at this school. In English class, whenever we were finished with our classwork, we would turn it into a tray in the corner of the room and we would be done for the day. We could work on other homework or sew something quietly at our desk, but that was it. Our teacher was pretty laid back and liked our class, so he'd let us get away with talking as long as we weren't bothering anyone. My desk was right next to the turn-in tray, so a lot of times, that area would turn into the hangout spot for me and my friends. I had a friend who was sitting on the floor next to me just talking. Another friend came to turn in his work and asked us about something that just confused us both. Just like a what the fuck, huh? Moment. Anyways, the one sitting on the floor basically makes a comment that was otherwise harmless, but just barely made reference to an incident we had all agreed not to talk about. We went to a religious school, it was best the school not know about this incident. Anyways, my friend gets this crazy look in his eye and starts just punching the friend who is still sitting next to me. From up close, it looked pretty brutal. From the other side of the room, it looked like just a bunch of uncoordinated arm flailing. So he does this and just runs out of the classroom. Everyone else was just sitting there in shock. The teacher didn't know what to do, so he just called down to the office and let them know what happened. After that we always had to have something to work on after our class work was finished. This actually happened just the other day, high school. There's this guy that I have a couple of classes with who I talk to sometimes, but it might be stretching it to say we are friends. So he's always very emotional, and I don't mean like he cries easily, like he gets heated easily, and gets very passionate about topics he's interested in. So I was in my English class the other day and there were still a few minutes before class started, so the teacher was at her desk and everyone was just hanging out talking when all of a sudden there's a very audible fuck you, you beach, from across the room. Now, knowing how loud he normally talks I just assume this was something he said to someone with more context to it, that I didn't hear. Nope. 
Everyone around him starts going whoa, and he was like what? She just faking shoved me out of the way. Keep in mind at this point everyone is very quiet, the teacher is already standing up and warning him to stop point the real kicker is that when she addressed him he goes what? Like really annoyed and the teacher is shocked for a moment before she basically drags him out of the class and into the office. After he was gone everyone just kind of looked at each other in disbelief point he came back to class later and explained what happened. So this is from his perspective. A girl sort of pushed him out of the way to get to her seat. So he walked over, shoved her and yelled at her weirdly enough he didn't receive any serious punishment point tldr. Guy in my class gets slightly shoved by girl, shoves girl back and shouts at her. Shouts at teacher when she tries to stop him. First lecture of philosophy of science two semesters ago. The professor was one of those who had a faculty in math, physics, history and philosophy. We were all kinda excited. So he comes in a little late. Every one of us are seeing him for the first time in our lives. Dude looks like a mad scientist, but guess we could expect that. He's walking to his chair, stumbling lightly and almost missing the chair entirely. He takes out his laptop and proceeds to open it from the backside struggles for a second so my friend walks up to him takes the laptop turns it around and opens it like it's supposed to the lecture starts and the professor began talking about desk and stumbling over his words so we all suspected what's up then he points a finger at me and then the window i look confused but realized he wanted me to draw the blinds down so we could see the projector better when I walked past his desk I took a better look at him and realized he's completely drunk, but hey that might be fun. Next minutes go by and we saw Dean's secretary look through the window and the door looking for the professor. Then suddenly the dean comes in with dear students the lecture is over, you're free. In the end it turned out that this professor was notorious for coming in sheet faced. Then we get two weeks off the lectures and next month had a different professor teach us for the rest of the semester. Back when I was attending college I ended up sharing a bunch of classes with this one older guy, approaching 70s I think, let's call him, Nigel, because he was British and his name very well may have been Nigel, since that's the John of Volder Brits. Now, when I say I shared a bunch of classes I mean that at times I had as many as two in a given day with him, because the man liked the humanities, and I was attending a lot of history classes at the time. Now, invariably, this guy wound up not being particularly popular with teachers we had together. Not because what he had to say was necessarily dumb, in fact he was quite well read, but the problem was that he couldn't cut to the chase at all. He'd raise his hand and be going for not one, not two, but sometimes three minutes before the teacher quelled him. I always found it a little amusing, if only because most new teachers would initially be inviting to this sort of thing because yay, interest in the course material, but inevitably they'd get sick of it and in one fashion or another show this. However, it was never quite as bad as the time we shared an English lit class together the professor for, that one was an excitable guy, passionate about what he taught, and tried to encourage his class to be the same, so as you might imagine he was perfect prey for a talkative sort like Nigel. Now, as per usual, the cycle began anew where Nigel would initially impress with his length of speech, before striking fear in the heart of his professor with just how long this guy could go on some topics. The teacher learned quickly to gently stifle Nigel, and even began passing over him at times, but tried to be polite about it point eventually, as all humanities courses are wont to do. We had group presentations his group was mostly young people with him as the solitary individual over 30 by any margin, and they were set to do Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. The whole point of this was mostly to cut into the meanings, symbolisms, and what not of the specific novel with no real encouragement to make it relevant to the modern era, much to the contrary actually. My teacher after all believed that understanding the context of an author's life can be crucial to understanding the tones and messages they are writing about, thus part of the presentation should have been more specifically about the influences on the author's writing by their life and time so, as this was a 100 or 200 level course it was some fairly dry stuff. These presentations, but this was actually quite excellent. The bulk of their group was charismatic, well versed, well practiced, and well put together. I found myself mostly paying attention, mostly, 
Then Nigel took to the stage, and for his part it was pretty clear he went off script for this one, because he whips out a letter he wrote for this very presentation point this old guy starts going on about how science is evil, how it created the atomic bomb, and now we are making robots and it's scary, except all of what I just described spanned an ongoing 15 minute length of him just reading this letter. Keep in mind, this is a low level course group presentation, and these are usually at most somewheres between 5 to 15 minutes long as a rule, and preferable somewheres in between. Most presentations push their limit, but in general the desire is to keep it short and sweet. Meanwhile, this guy has long since gone past their time, like 10 minutes ago past their time, and there's no sign of end to this letter he wrote. The teacher finally just cuts him off and asks him to end it there, because of course there are others who need to do presentations the students from that group later told me, and some others, that they felt rather spurned by the whole thing, because they knew they'd done rather well up until that moment. TLDR, old British man holds class of Canadians hostage with essay about how science leads to Nazis. Okay, I have two point first one comes from fifth grade. We had a teacher with this weird hobby, where she would collect dead birds. Well, none of us really thought about it too hard until one day we found a dead bird on the playground during recess. She just walked up, put on some rubber gloves, put the bird corpse in her lunchbox, and walked away. The next day, she showed the whole class her dead bird collection. Freaked us out. Second one is from my junior year of high school. Basically, a bunch of guys in my class had a group chat where they would share nudes of their ex-girlfriends. I wasn't that popular or social, so I wasn't in the chat and I didn't know about it. Well, one day, all I could hear from these guys was them freaking out about something. They were figuring out stories and excuses for something and getting scared over how their parents would kill them. I didn't know what they were talking about and I didn't pay it much attention. Then, when I was running around the school doing stuff for yearbook, I see a cop walking down to the principal's office. Turns out, the chat was technically child pornography and they called the cops to figure out the whole thing. I still didn't know what was going, so I just told everyone that cops were here and watched some students freak out. Then ninth period comes, and the teacher gives us this really vague speech about the whole thing telling us how we should know better, and of how he's ashamed of us and all that. He doesn't tell us what's happened, and I'm just left wondering what is going on. After school, one of my friends gives me the whole story, because I'm the only one who doesn't know what's going on. That was a weird day. Nothing too exciting, but I was still surprised it happened, and it is mildly amusing point in 8th grade, my history class was the period before lunch. At the time, the class was working on reports about someone deceased that they found interesting. For my report I chose Charles Schultz, the creator of Peanuts, aka Charlie Brown. I sat next to a couple girls I'd went to school with for a while and knew them pretty well. We were friends, but the kind that liked to tease each other or put the other in awkward situations. All in good fun though. While talking to them about my report, I mentioned the Charlie Brown Christmas special and the funny way the kids danced during their play rehearsal. I thought it would be funny to show them one of the dances, which caused them to burst out in laughter. The teacher heard and took notice, coming over to us to ask what was so funny. 666 Skagosi just did a funny dance for us, from Snoopy, or something to that effect. Teacher looks at me and asks me to explain, so I told her I did a dance from Charlie Brown. Her response was, show me. I refused. She persisted but I still refused. By now the rest of the class had taken notice. However, I did not want to give her the satisfaction or embarrass myself in front of everyone. The two girls who are still cracking up, especially, so the teacher decided to start making threats, like a write-up or detention. All of which I told her to go ahead and do. She then tried, if you don't stand up and do the dance in front of the class, I will hold the entire class through lunch. That didn't work either. I told her, I don't have a lunch or lunch money anyway, so I don't care. She became visibly flustered and took me out into the hall. It is here that I cannot remember what she said, but I realized she wasn't going to back down, so I conceded quickly throwing my arms straight out and doing the jig for a second or two, defeated. 
I didn't get a write up or detention and the class got to go to lunch point a side story about the same teacher. Very first day of class, she assigned me a seat up front. The same two girls from the last story are sitting in the same row but at desks in the back. I started talking to them while waiting for class to start. They kept me talking and talking to the point where I didn't realize the teacher was behind me trying to get my attention. All of a sudden I got whacked with a rolled up newspaper. Not very hard or anything, but enough to get my attention and a what the hell are you doing K before turning and seeing it was her. Actually one of my favorite teachers of all time. She was just mean and bitter a lot because she was dying of cancer and didn't have too long to live. But I tell you what, she loved history and was passionate about teaching it. At the end of the day, all she wanted was for the students to give a fact to and a good laugh or two. No hard feelings Mrs. Holland. R.I.P. Little late, but the day the presidential elections were happening, everyone was expecting Hillary to win, what with the news coverage and whatnot. Throughout the day everyone is checking their phones and reporting the voting results. Slowly, over the course of the day, it starts becoming more and more apparent that the race is closer than expected. Nearing lunch, people are realizing Trump may win. Everyone is getting wound up some people are treating it like the rapture. Others, like the apocalypse. Kids are crying or laughing out of control. Teachers are pussy as fuck. Super high strung point at some point in the day, the power goes out. This exacerbates the issue further. Kids are freaking out. People are heralding the end of days. Everyone gets assembled in the hallway while staff is trying to figure out what to do. A few scattered kids run down the hall, escaping point then it happens some kid reports that Trump has made it to 270. Then another. Then another pandemonium. All organization immediately breaks down. Kids are running down the halls, not even to escape, just to add to the anarchy. Some teachers are flipping sheet. School is dismissed and kids take the insanity into the parking lot. Point I'm one of the kids who loves the anarchy. I casually pull a copy of Mean Camp I was reading out of my backpack, hold it up like it was the Holy Bible and proclaim that salvation lies within. I almost got my ass beat multiple times that day. It was great point our middle school also made national news around the same time when all the kids in the lunchroom started chanting build the wall and all the Hispanic kids cried. I have multiple stories. A math teacher got tired of my friends and tics, so in the middle of class she ran up to his desk and screamed edge, stop being such a jackass. She then tried to defend herself to all the laughing students saying that she was talking about the animal, not the bad word point the crafts teacher at my school is known for always being a beach. One day she let out her full beachiness on another one of my friends who just stared at her. She then proceeded to demand he get up and leave. Well, he gets up and then starts Fortnite dancing with her screaming at him and other student crying laughing. Trying to find their phones. I don't remember if this was a history or math teacher, but the guy was faking crazy. He would throw desks, slam chairs against students' desks, and jump on top of the desks to yell at students. He got fired that year I had another crazy teacher, but she was science. She gave me so many panic attacks because she constantly talked about how the world was going to start ending in a lifetime, but this is just one of the many crazy things she did. One time, she ran around with fox pup saying who wants to eat it? We all thought she wasn't being serious, and so one girl jokingly said I will. While rolling her eyes, the teacher ran up to her and proceeded to try and get the girl to eat the crap saying it's probably safe. Any bacteria inside most likely died years ago. Come on I will give you extra credit. Yeah nobody wanted to eat the years old fox pup. She also was fired. Lastly, well, not last, but this could actually go on forever, I had another science teacher who was an actual crazy scientist. He would light things on fire during class and then beg us not to tell our parents or other teachers because he would get fired. The guy would also make animal sounds and moan sounds from his desk in the corner in the back of the room. Point at least school was never boring. XD. Side note, all of the classrooms had at least one wall that was made of windows and had a ledge you can easily sit on. This is important later on point so this happened a few months into my senior year at high school. 
Every so often the school brings in the drug dogs to search random classrooms and parking lots. My school campus is pretty big, so there's seven parking lots altogether. When they announce to the teachers to keep their doors locked and not let students leave, I'm on the fourth floor in my government class. My teacher is one of those carefree do what you want it's not my fault if you fail this class kind of teachers, so he just puts up the notes on the board and it's usually quiet when we write them down. I just took a picture of the notes and was scrolling on Reddit when a car alarm goes off. I started laughing quietly with my friends in the class because someone probably was sent down to the parking lot to open their car and set their own car alarm off. The cops aren't allowed to open student cars. If the dogs start to go off, then another car alarm goes off point and then another one went off in about 2 minutes. Almost all of the car alarms in the parking lot were going off. All the seniors in my class except for me and two others had their keys out and their alarms going off. At this point we are all sitting at the window, laughing our ass off, until we look at the teacher parking lot, which was right next to the student parking lot. I can't remember the actual number, but I'm pretty sure there was at least 4 car alarms going off there. I remember looking at the guy, I later realized, was my friend T, nickname for privacy reasons, who was originally called down, to open his car and just seeing him laughing as well. The principal actually came on the intercom and told everyone to turn their alarms off. Only a few did, but after about 5 minutes everyone gradually turned their alarms off point I kinda felt bad for the drug dogs because although they were near the side of the parking lot one of the dogs started barking and turning its head a lot point the thing that gets me though is how there were teachers that did it too.